And it says waiting for Fremen on the sun. It says end stream. So I am live. Aim. Oh, so no, it's right. I am live. I just had aim. to refresh it twice to get it to show up. Weird. Uh, the main reason he's doing this is to raise money slash awareness for the humanitarian crisis in Yemen is currently facing. Any retweet and donation helps. It all goes to one of the most trusted charity orcs in Yemen, Yemen Relief and Reconstruction Foundation. And uh, so he started a poopy boy, he ended up a pee pee man. So that's it. That's 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 the new story. We you, you you got the new story for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I, oh, I, I thought we were going to talk about. Um, oh yeah, we were going to talk about what's it, aren't we? Uh, Ina Blyton. Juneteenth. Oh, Juneteenth. Well, yeah, just briefly, Juneteenth. So like, um, it's Father's Day, and because blacks don't have the fathers, they get consolation prize of Juneteenth, which is totally a legit celebration of legit things. Totally. Um, so please don't burn down our cities because you're jealous that everyone else is celebrating Father's Day except you because you don't know who your father is because you're all raised bastards so yeah happy Juneteenth you fucking oh no I'm not so Juneteenth say. as you may guess is a mishmash between June and 19th I bet is that because um, dark people can't pronounce things yeah, ask. Just ask them to say ask. Just like, well, there's a website. Well, there's a website called Juneteenth.com. Is is there a website like you could go there right now? But I suggest you don't. Well, yeah, exactly. Us. Is there a website called Can you behave like a normal being for like more than one second? Well, as of twenty one, Juneteenth is a federal holiday. So it's celebrated by the feds. Okay, that that that's a cool story. So. Like, so, there, so it, it, according to um, Metro, this, this this is if you want to read more. This is attached to Black Lives Matter. So Juneteenth is is a celebration of killing seven uh, Dallas police officers, isn't it? Well, like if Black Lives Matter, have, has anyone told the dark people that Black Lives Matter? Because I don't think they've got the memo yet. Um, because Black Lives only matter if they're killed by Whitey. Oh yeah, that because like blacks don't have any compo money you can get for um, for killing yeah. them. You know, just like do around, do a drive by on the school bus. Yeah, that's a good idea because I'm yeah because because white 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 devils be racist, Joe. So I've done that story, but the other thing, as I mentioned, is like like someone might say, Hobbit, why is the show called Enid Blyton as underappreciated or under under. Pre underappreciated author and the reason for that is quite simple you see um she's been in the news uh, right cage architect who absolutely isn't isn't top cat yeah um toppy i think you've kind of jumped the shark now by saying that phil's daughter is sexy a 12 year old girl is sexy i think you've kind of you've kind of reached the the limit now yeah, so I wanted to do a nice story about um, Ina Blyton. Pretty much, pretty much the only place you can go now, Toppy, is, uh, is PA, because they're the only people that will cover up for paedophiles. Yeah, so, like, okay, I wanted to do a nice story about Ina Blyton and how much, like, I think her, her work is good. But, yeah, last night, two in the morning, Phil was doing a stream and Top Cat was, like, saying... I'm gonna beat you up, kill you, and then I'm gonna adopt your daughter because that's trash and I think she's sexy, your 12 year old daughter. I'm gonna take good care of her, Phil. That, that's, that's really nice, that is. That, that's, 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 a, what, that's a normal thing to say to people. You, you're gonna do yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, and another news if you missed the, the drunk driving stream last night, I am hungover, by the way, so I'm not gonna do Euro Truck today. Uh, for some reason, YouTube said, yeah, we took this down because it's... Hang on, what was the specific wording of it? Let me just have a look. I took a screenshot because I was like, I've never seen that before. Um, it's in Doodling Pad. So, uh, dear Fremen on the Sand, who's, uh, you know, a good friend of mine, we wanted to let you know our team reviewed your content. We think it violates our violent criminal organizations policy. 
We know you may not have realised this was a violation of our policies, so we're not applying a strike to your channel. However, we've removed the following content from YouTube. Saturday Night Drunk Driving Euro Truck Sim. So, me, drunk driving in Euro Truck Simulator is, like, that's vi violence. The, the, the violence. The violent organised crim... So, am I the Mafia now? I think that's what it means, right? Yeah. I, I am... Look at me. I am I am the Mafia now. Uh, we're going to talk about... Let's talk about Ina Blyton then, because I've got the I've got the, uh, the Wikipedia open. Oh, okay. Well, Ina Blyton, uh, she did the Fantastic Four, Secret Seven. They're good, wholesome adventure stories. Her books have been acute, have been criticised as being elitist, sexist, racist, a xenophobic, and at odds with more progressive environment emerging in post-Second World War Britain. So, in other words, people... But they've continued to be bestsellers since her death in 1968. So, despite what the critics say, and they're jealous of her success, um, Ina Blyter remains a firm favourite amongst all children. And it was like, it was the first, like, I wanted to learn to read because of, like, the Magic Fire Tree, and my dad was like, I'm not going to read this to you anymore. You've got to read it yourself. So that's why I learned to read, so I could read the Magic Fire Tree. And long, All right, so in... Oh, go on. Long, long, long before, like, um... Lord of the Rings and all that stuff. I was like, I, I read the Magic Fire Tree, and that's like proper. Wow, that's that's a uh, lot of buzzing there. Um, the the yeah, it's, it's just good fancy. If you've never read, I, I, imagine, I imagine Phil's just sat there with his laptop attached to like a bank of like uh, martial lamps. I, I I was just like thinking it's like got a petrol powered battery for some reason. No, 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 they use they use paraffin in in the Soviet Union. Uh, yeah, but yeah, no. It, oh, the other thing is, I'm, I'm glad Phil's here. He's never read um, uh, Magic Fire Tree, oh, but you you should sometime because like there's a like a, this the the premise by the Magic Fire Tree was there's this enchanted word and there was this really tall tree which would go up into uh, the clouds. And the clouds would have these realms on there. So the kids would go off on adventures um, down uh, to the wood. And there'd be mi myth myth mystical creatures like fairies and gnomes and stuff living there. And they'd go to the top of the tree to see what realm was there. And uh, I remember one of the realms was called the land of take what you want. Which is uh, now formerly known as Ancapistan. So they go to the land of. Then there was the land of sweets. Is that just called America? She just went to. They just went to America. <laughs> yeah, but you have to pay for things in America. Like in the land of take what you want, you see like you see like um, like a, a car or a dog or like a horse or you know a house, and you just take it because it's the land of take what you want. But there was, was that no, was the was the land of take what you want populated by the gollywogs, was it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, the thing is, the, the the land of take what you want. They they never really. It was only sort of glossed over. Like, um, oh, that was it. Um, like, I think cousin Roger comes to visit them, and uh, he gets lost in the land of the really strict boarding school where you get like caned for the slightest offence. And <laughs> they eventually managed to rescue him, but. They said, oh, what ventures did you go on when I was gone? Oh, well, there was the land of take what you want, where we just helped ourselves to whatever, but unlike you, we're not greedy bastards, so, you know, we only took, like, a couple of cones and uh, and some cloves and uh, buttons. Okay. Oh, and then there was the land of sweets, where, like, the railings were made out of boiled sweets and, like, dogs were made out of chocolate and... Oh, great, did you get a load of chocolate? Did you get... Oh, but we got some licorice and some aniseed balls. Oh, okay. Oh, and then there was the land of the 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 fairground. Oh, that sounds really good. Did you get some some rock? Did you get some toffee apples? No, we went on the dodgems for a bit and then decided to go back down again. And it's like, it's it's a really I'm I'm not doing like the magic fiery tree true justice, and I I don't remember like ninety percent of it. But I seem to remember there was this, like, a sequel. There was the Enchanted Wood, the Magic Fire Tree. Then there was a third book. And in the third book, there were gnomes, and they were hacking into the roots of the Magic Fireway Tree because they are like, um, they didn't want... The folk to... of the Fireway Tree, Hobbit. The folk of the Fireway Tree, that's it. And there's, 
like those various characters. There was Silky, the fairy. Uh, oh, here we go. Alphabet cat. Dick and Fanny in the magic fiery tree. Now I'll change to Rick and Fanny. Dick and Fanny. Yeah, because like Dick and Fanny. <laughs> yeah, I always thought those names were funny. But you had Silky the fairy. You had uh, Moonface because his face. Mr. Was... What's his name? Mr. What's his name? Wash a lot. Oh, Moonface. Oh, Dame Wash Moon Man. Moon Man was in it, wasn't he? Yeah, it? Moon Man was in it, and he was like, you know, he's he was a known active musician. There was actually a chapter that like, explained how Mr. Uh, the saucepan man who lives with Mr. What's his name? His name stems from the fact he's covered all over with saucepans and kettles. Yes. And he often rattles when he walks around. It says, sometimes he cannot understand what his friends are saying because he's partially deaf, which is further aggravated by all the noise from the pans and kettles. Yeah, it, it's, quite, <laughs> it's quite amusing. Oh, there we go. Dame Slap had become Dane Snap and no longer practiced corporal punishment. Instead, reprimands the students by shouting at No, bollocks. This historical revision is... I'm glad I've got, like, the original ones where it's... Dame just... Slap. She sounds like a proper lass, doesn't she? D Dame Slap, who runs a school for bad pixies. Yeah, and then I, I think in the Magic Fiery Tree, their cousin was called Roger. And the reason I think of him as Roger is because... You know Roger the Dodger in, in the Beano? No, Dick's the cousin. Oh, Cousin Dick. There we go. Well, he reminds me of yeah. Ro Roger the Dodger in the Beano. The sort of similar sort of character. Always a bit bit sort of greasy. Do you know, in later it... revisions, his name was updated to Rick as uh, Dame Slap was, ch was changed to Dame Snap. Yeah, Alphabet Cat just mentioned that. Uh, Dick and Fanny in the Magic Fiery Tree now changed to Rick and Franny. It's like just... The Land of Goodies, which is the, the sweet one. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm getting that confused with, um, like, when, like, the Germans take over the nuclear power plant in The Simpsons, and uh, Homer just has this, like, uh, fantasy about uh, the land of chocolate, and uh, and then the sort of... The, the it's the land of take what you want and the land of do as you please as well, Hobbit. Ah, uh, yes, the uh, and Capistan... Uh, <laughs> Oh, with that understanding of Ancapistan and uh, the libertarian paradise, it's like. Did you ever read the Far Away, the uh, the wishing chair? No, no, I haven't read the w wishing chair, and I haven't read Noddy either. Um, wishing chair. The, I had the wishing chair read to me at school when I was a kid. Yeah, F Phil says he didn't like the Magic Faraway Tree because it was like it was read to him at school, and it's like my school was never reading me stuff like that. There was um. What did my school read to us? Oh, I don't even remember. Probably some. About the Famous Five. Do you like the Famous Five? Hobbit? Yeah, Famous Five was good. And then there was the Secret Seven. And I was like, why is there like. And the, neither of them were related to one another. So I was like, why are there these two. It's the rip off, it's isn't it? Posh kids, isn't it? The problem with Enid Blight, it's all posh people. Been posh people shit. Have you... Lashings of ginger beer. <laughs> Which was a phrase never uttered in either the Secret Seven or um, Famous Five. Have you seen uh, the the Young Ones parody of it? Where five go mad in Dorset. I was going to say Five go mad on mescaline. That's yeah, Five go mad in Dorset. Isn't it? I thought it was, it was called Five go mad in mescaline. But I'm a Five go mad in Dorset. Oh, wait a second. I'm I'm not I'm going to I'm going to snopes you right now. English guy on says uh, wishing chair was based as could be. Go watch out watch out for them grab it gnomes. <laughs> <Oof>. <laughs> that sounds anti-semitic to me. Let me let me let me have a look. The comic strip oh, presents Aldarian 936 says the one where Moonface shoots the barn elf and the violating the nap is a banger. Uh, I know th th this this is real. I'm going to change the focus so that people can see what I'm looking at here. So the comic strip presents Five Go Mad on Mescaline, 1983. On the way to stay with Mrs. French at Hot Turkey Farm, the famous five here on the radio, their Uncle Quentin's escaped prison. Yeah, you know what? You know what, Uncle Quentin? You know, you know what the, the, the reveal about Uncle Quentin is, don't you? Well, I'm going to read the blurb and we'll see. Arriving at the farm, they're reported to meet vulgar millionaire Mr. Budweiser and his spoilt son, Willie. Julian and Dick are so incensed they sleep outdoors where they spy two heavies being secretly villainous. The trail leads to uh, Love Island where they discover under Quentin and his boyfriend Toby. Oh, 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 oh it's, it's a modern love story. Oh, I didn't know Enid Blyton created the Secret Seven as well. 
Well, that's what I'm saying. You're saying it's a rip-off, but I'm like, but how can it be a rip-off when... It's kind of like when... Well, she ripped off her own thing, didn't she? It's kind of like when um, Jerry Anderson did Fireball XL5, and then he did Stingray. And then, like, if you'd never seen his stuff before, it's like, isn't this just like a like uh, Fireball XL5 bit in the sea? And the answer is, yeah, pretty uh, much. Don't we, don't, I think we need to talk about Noddy, don't we? Now, Noddy is probably where she gets the most criticism from, so... Go, well, Noddy ahead. is problematic, isn't he? Yeah, because, like, Noddy has been told by Big Ears to watch out for those gollywogs. They'll steal your, your wheels. <laughs> they, 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 that's, like, literally the first time mission is watch out for those gollywogs. They do like your car, Noddy, and they will have it. <laughs> It should just like, you know, there was what the fuck. Noddy, the first book explains Noddy's origins. He's made by a woodcarver in a toy store, but runs away after the man begins to make a wooden lion, which scares Noddy. As he wanders through the woods, naked, penniless, and homeless, he meets Big Ears, a friendly gnome. So, in, in, in other, yeah. so in other words, the carpenter's like a top cat, and um, yeah. <laughs> what? That's 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 well based. It's fucking race based as well because they put Noddy on trial and examine whether he's a toy or an ornament. Oh, okay. Now that's because he goes to Toyland. So if you go to Toyland, you have to be a toy. Oh, I s right. Okay, that's that's strange. Are hey, these cycle paths? Is there an ornament land or toy or toy land? Yeah. Hmm. The white or black that we don't know, do we? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Is he three fifths a toy? Oh, well, they don't okay. even mention the gollywogs in the uh, in the Noddy thing. Oh no, I, I guess that this, but this is the thing. There used to be a time uh, up until what the nineteen sixties maybe, where or I think in this country up until the nineteen eighties, where you could be honest and truthful about certain things, and then uh, political correctness oh, went wait, mad. Twenty four books. What? Well, no, she's written more than 24 books. Admittedly, they were quite short. Like 24 books in the Noddy series. Wow. Yeah, she, she really likes Noddy. Oh, no. Sales of Noddy books were large, with estimates 600,000 in annual sales in France alone. Growing popularity in India, the large market for Enid Blyton books. The Noddy character was formerly owned by Chorian, who sold the rights to DreamWorks Classics. A part of the DreamWorks animation, which is now a subsidiary of NBC Universal. Yeah, in 2012. I, I don't think they're going to be doing a film adaptation of Noddy anytime soon. But I think I even remember back in the 90s there was an animated show about Noddy. Who, who, who would win in a fight, Phil? Uh, Noddy or or Rupert the Bear? Uh, probably Rupert. I think not. Noddy is a complete fucking nankhead. I'm going to be honest with you. What are you talking, yeah. Phil? No, uh, that's I, complete I, bullshit. Right, I'm going to call you out on your bullshit right well, okay, there. Okay, racist man. That's right. the only good thing about him. No, Noddy, who was built by definitely not Top Cat, who was going to, like, you know, feed him to his, his lion. Yeah, he was, he was like a little Bart doll, weren't he? Yeah. He's, he's the Bart doll that got away. I mean, yeah. Rupert the Bear yeah. just had everything handed yeah. to him on a silver platter. Whereas Noddy worked himself to the bone to get that car. And that's why Big Ears warned yeah, him he, about... he arrived naked and penniless in Toyland. Ends up with a car and everything, doesn't he? Yeah. No, that and he had no family to call on because... He's literally he bootstrapped Noddy, isn't he? Yeah. He pulled himself up by his bootstraps. Yeah, fuck you, Phil. You're wrong. You're, you're wrong on this right. one. Yeah, he's all right now. Yeah, Noddy's all right. Yeah. Noddy escaped a life of buggery. So. Yeah, yeah, he, he, yeah. He, he was the he was uh, he he was the Bart to uh, Top Cat's uh, toy maker, weren't he? The Bart doll that got away. Yeah. So in some ways, it's like yeah, Noddy, like, like the the, the English equivalent of the Strumpfs, because like uh, uh, the, in the Smurfs, they they got like uh, it's admittedly it's a gay society, but it's kind of doesn't matter. Do you know there's a 1992, an ongoing French series of Noddy? Yeah, that's what I was saying. There was an animated series of Noddy, and the, so the French are still yeah. carrying it on. 
they, I bet they have the gollywogs, don't they? Oh, goodness me, of course they got the gollywogs. But I think in France they've got, like, a, a lot more positive opinion Isn't of Isn't, like, blacks. Mr. Plod like a proper cunt, isn't he, as well? Uh, I don't know enough of Noddy to say yes or no on that one, so, uh, sorry, I can't help you there. <clears throat> sorry. Uh, being a bit Canadian now, saying sorry a lot. Let me see. No, I don't want intercity trains here. So if you're wondering, I'm not doing Euro Truck Simulator. I'm <gasps> oh, no. That sly and gobbo, the mischievous, mischievous gobl goblins from Noddy. They usually steal things such as ice cream, coins, or Noddy's car. They do not appear, at least not nearly as much as in, in Enid Blyton's original books. They have not been featured in the franchise since 2009. I wonder, I wonder who, I wonder who would, would object to that. Yeah, the, the, there's certain people that, for whatever reason, object to it. I'm um, speaking of like goblins objecting to being put in the press. Maybe you want to do it on the Tuesday show, but you've seen like the French generals being interviewed on French TV, and um, like the 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 goblin journalist is getting incensed with him, and he's like, "Who? Who's criticising who?" And he's like, uh, "The community whose name we can't mention." And that's become a euphemism for Jews, so now you can't even say the community in um, in France without getting in trouble. Imagine that. Imagine that you can't even use a euphemism to describe a bunch of people that object to all forms of criticism. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll, I mean, we'll do that more on Tuesday because... Oh, there is bad news, actually. Um, so, uh, Belgium Rambo, Jürgen Connings... Uh, has been found dead. Allegedly. I don't know. I mean... Allegedly. I, I mean, these people could tell Allegedly me... Allegedly he shot himself in the back of the head. Yeah, I mean, these people could tell me that... Uh, what's it called? Um, <coughs> that the sky is blue. And I'd be like, well... Uh, I don't believe you. It's both blue. But I don't believe it's blue. Yeah, so... Y y they, they say a lot of shit, and just because they say it doesn't mean make it so. Right, let's follow this one. Make make sure, because I've got all these trains coming from intercities, which I don't want them doing that. So I'm going to make sure they can't come here anymore. These, this is local train stops for local people. Uh, why? Well, why is there a picture of a Bart doll holding a? Is that a bottle of wine? Lube? I don't know. Uh, what? Is that the is that the the Bart doll or is it a Bart doll? It's the Bart doll. Oh. Oh no. Looking very clean, the Bart doll is. He's put in the fucking washing machine. Just yeah. Is he? He's even. He's even put a pretend tag on it because it's like, yeah, I've only. I haven't had to wash it because it's covered in wallpaper paste. Yeah. He. He. He's, he hang on. He's. He's got exposed brickwork. Since when is he going to put wallpaper? Uh, I mean, well, they no. I think they just expose brickwork like a feature wall, don't they? Yeah, it's not all the way wrong. Yeah. Hmm. Brucey Kibbert says Bart's been around since the nineties. Too old for Top Cut. Since I call Coletti Spaghetti Meach in it, the chat. Isn't it nineteen eighty nine? Alphabet wants to know: Did TBR get your main channel struck down? Do you believe it was oh, TBR? Oh, oh. My channel got um, struck down for um, hate speech. You don't. Well, it could, could have been Officer Cat, couldn't it? Could have, yeah. It, it's weird. It's weird that Hobby got his channel, one of his um, videos, took down. What yeah, the, the one where I had Top Cat in the bottom right corner? Yeah, yeah. It's it is unusual that. It's almost like Top Cat's trying to scrub it from the internet, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's trying to scrub a lot of things from the internet. You know what I mean? Well, Especially after last night, isn't he? The thing is, yeah. though, now people, when they see Top Cat, they're just going to start recording the things he does and use it in, like, clips, so... The thing yeah. is, every time, he's, every time he's tried to epically own me, he's like, oh, I'm going to have a debate with him. I'm going to fucking own him. How's this worked out? This time, first time, it was bad. Second time was bad. Third time, it's made himself look like a paedophile. What's gonna happen next? Who knows? I mean, is, it's. Is he gonna who go? Know, who knows? But we, one thing we do know is Charlie will defend it. Yeah, Charlie will defend it. 
Yeah, yeah Charlie wants to fuck all of us. Well, he's saying he wants to abduct my. It's not, it's not the first time Charlie's defended a paedophile. It won't be the he last. Just, time, he's either. just taken Daisy Duke's uh, song to heart. St Dolly Parton, "Stand by Your Man." Yeah, stand by your man. Mates do, innit? Mates stand by their mates, even if they have said they want to abduct someone's kid. And, uh, yeah. That's just what mates do, innit, I guess. Yeah, you just help cover over Peter Pedophilia if you're a mate. Stand Don't worry, it was just a joke. He was trying to trigger me. Yeah. yeah just yeah. quickly. Huh. Eggs on your face, Phil. Huh. Hey, look, yeah, Phil, I've got my dick in, I've got my dick in your cat. You triggered. Yeah, yeah, I fucked Lip you, Dad. Dad. Libtard. Fuck you, Dad. Are you, are you triggered? <laughs> You're not triggered, are you, Snowflake? Wait, you're gonna Snowflake cry. Snowflake. You're gonna poo your <laughs> pants. I'm Luke Barron now. Everyone thinks I'm a, an epic fucking troll because I said I'd abduct your kid. Hilarious. <laughs> yeah. He did, he did uh, message me and he says, take that video down. And I said, no. Not taking the video down. Is it on? I thought he was no, coming he... round your house to kick fuck out of you. No problem. Oh, yeah. He said, didn't he? Not my house now. I'm phoning the police. Definitely. I'll say. You'll say, what? You scared of me? It's like no, because if you do beat me up, you said you're going to abduct my kid. You should yeah. be in jail. To be fair. Yeah. Cross the line. No, it's it's no longer it's no longer like oh we're going to have a fight. It's like you've you've exposed yourself as being a potential child predator. It's legit. Yeah. <laughs> Bikes off. Standards, mate. That, that, that's standards, that is. <laughs> yeah. The fight is off. Trust me. It's, uh, it's pretty unpleasant. Well, speaking of, we, we have got some Top Cat adjacent news, seeing yeah. as the subject's up. So I'm just going to bring it up. And I don't feel I'm going to read from Pink News today because it's not that funny. But I did see this thing on, on Twitter here. Um, so let me just make the thing window capture change there we go those who disagree with me have a warped sense of reality according to science majority opposed trans rights and black lives matter movement have warped sense of reality according to science and so there's the pink news air balloon he's uh, he's sticking up for an organization that killed seven dallas police officers is, is that is that you know you, you're warped if you're against that are you yeah yeah you are but but also if you don't you also don't like queers, so um, uh, yeah. eat, eat shit. Yeah, there we literally. Go. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I've done the Cambridge guided bus. Oh, so, uh, Top Cat needs to explain this. Flossie says uh, apparently his nonce comments were out of context. Phil, can you imagine a, con a, a context where saying your daughter, your twelve-year-old daughter's sexy is uh, is okay? I'll tell you the context. So the context was me and uh, Toppy were saying we're gonna have a fight and that. Toppy said, "I'll agree to have a fight with you, and after the fight, I'm gonna take your daughter away." He didn't say it. Uh, let's be let's be fair. He didn't say he'd rape my kid or anything. And after he sent me a message in Telegram saying your kid is sexy. That's exactly what he said. So when when is it ever okay? And I mean ever okay. To say that. Uh, someone's kid is sexy, and uh, that's a little bit of homework for you. When when do you think that's ever okay? Well, put it this when way: can you not, if if like you, um when... like the daughter was an adult and I was friends with the father, and I'd be like, you, you know, your your daughter would make a fine wife. I think that that's like the the politest way of saying that. I... I think that's still massively pushing it. I, I still it? think that that goes. Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah, because I'm trying to think. How would you say to a friend, it's like, you know, your your daughter's like, I want to yeah. marry her, and like, uh, because you you eventually. Uh... There is no way of saying I want to fuck your daughter that is acceptable, is there? No. <laughs> no matter what <laughs> age, no, no matter what age she is. What, like she, Hold on a minute. To be fair, if she's like eighteen, you can get away with it, I guess. But if she's twelve, like my daughter is, well, like, never yeah. But would you actually, would you actually say that to a guy that you know? You wouldn't actually say that to oh, anybody know. you know, if, would you? If, it was, if you were, if you were having a fight, if it was like, oh, we're having a fight, I hate you, you cunt, then then you could say, it, I guess. Yeah. But my daughter's twelve, so even in a fight, even in a fight, not allowed to say that about a twelve-year-old ever. Yeah. Okay. 
I've never, you're not. There's no way you can say. Oh, it, yeah. To be honest. Whoppers put it out. And I'm, tr I'm trying to think how do I thread this needle? Should I do it when I'm hungover? But well, the, the point is, it's not how do I thread this needle, it's should I thread this needle. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to. F uh, there must be some sort of way of just saying, to, like, I I'm going to be doing like a grappler fish thing here, but, like, you'll. You're 20, the, 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 the woman's 20, and your friends... It's a bit Rumpelstiltskin, isn't it? Your friends with the father who's in his 40s, and... I mean... Is this... Is this you're sounding like Geralt now. I'm trying to... Yeah, I'm, I'm just like... But upstairs in his court, totally under a far way. No, I, I'm not interested in the dad. I'm like... You, you've got to say to the dad, hey, I want your daughter's hand in marriage. And see see what I mean? There is no way, there is no context, no matter the age of the child, that that is acceptable. What? Oh, but I'm going to say, like, when she's not a child, she's like 20 and you're 20. And... No, people must do uh... this all the time, right? Like, uh, they'd be like, I think it's almost sort of, even before they sort of, you like, formally go to the Yeah, father has got it right. That's proper dodgy, I bet you'd be asking for a slap TBH. Yeah, yeah. But people do this all the time, though. They, they. You can't even, you can't even justify it if the girls, girls of age. You can't even justify saying something like that if the girls of age. You so you sure as hell can't fucking justify it if the girls twelve. Oh no, no, of course not. More reasonable. If you make Brutus sound more reasonable, you fucked up. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Up. <laughs> you fucked up. Like Brutus at least said sixteen. He was like 16, 14. Well, he started at fourteen and, mo and moved up when he re when he realised. Because I, I I believe Brutus was absolutely sober on that stream. I, I think the um, the bottle clanking was pure theatre. I think he I'm just like, has okay, a collection of bottles like, on this table. Drunk. Like I was drunk. It's like even if you're drunk, you can't be a bit nancy when you're drunk. I've never been mm. a bit nancy when I'm drunk. Right. I figured out. Like was... This. Let's listen to this. Does this sound like a man who's drunk? <laughs> Well, fuck all those cunts. He's not slurring his words, is he? Not slurring at all. So, here we go. I've figured out I'm going to dig myself out of this hole, right? Um, every day, millions of people... Okay. What? What's the... Oh. What? Have you, have you seen your comments, Phil? Creating fake accounts and pretending to be me is going to get someone seriously hurt and you in a lot of trouble. You need to stop. Well, my daughter... I don't know, it says creating fake account and pretending to be me. Hmm. Uh, yeah, he must be talking to you. That's re that's a reply to your video. So he did say that. Like, everyone who watched that stream, yeah. he fucking said that. He fucking did say that. They were watching the stream, they, they're my fucking witness. He said he would abduct my fucking kid. He did say that. Not making this shit up. Everyone was huh. there. He said, yeah. well, I'm fight and I'll take your daughter and look after her what he said to me and I said what the fuck have you just said what do you mean you're gonna look after my kid he sent me a voice note said well I think it's rather trad I think it's traditional to fucking uh, take someone's daughter after you beat their father up so uh -huh. yeah but my daughter's old. and then he said I think your daughter's sexy that's what he said yeah. he but... hey, what he's trying to do he's trying he's trying to roll it back now but you can't roll it back because loads of people, loads of people were in the stream top class. You were fucking. You were, you went you went from attacking a survivor of cancer, making some fucked up shit about Doral Albion, and then you went down path of so, fucking sickness. So chat, like I I realise what I'm saying it sounds wrong. I would like to say there is a difference between asking uh, the husband you what, what no husband father your father who is going to potentially be your father-in-law to say can I have your daughter's hand in marriage there is an ocean of difference between that and what top cat said yeah there and i i think that i i will draw a line under that and not pursue this further because i feel embarrassed yeah. now <laughs> because it's because it, here you go you're talking about asking for a hand in marriage but top cat isn't even talking about that because no, you no. know so what do you oh, do with it? I'm going to beat you up and then I'm going to take your 12 year old and look after her. And then yeah. he's like, I'm not going to answer though. Oh, by the way, I think your daughter's sexy. He's trying to. At uh, the bare minimum, he was trying to like trigger me. He was like, I'm going to trigger him. But the problem is, if you try and trigger me by pretending to be a paedophile, you can't pretend to be a paedophile either. 
Oh, jokes on yours, only pretending. Uh, a bit like this one. Okay, all right, here's the fucking million dollar I'm gonna barge in. No, no, hang on a minute. I'm gonna fucking barge in here now. I'm gonna tell you the, the hard, the hardcore fucking truth that you guys don't want to hear. Here's the fucking truth of the matter. You don't want to fuck these 16 year old girls. No, listen. No, 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 no. You don't want to fuck them, but some packy's gonna do it instead. <laughs> And that that is the that is the league of discourse that that Top Cat wants to join. Hold on a minute, Brutus is more reasonable. He said sixteen. Yeah, he was yeah. more reasonable. Toppy was like, "I'm yeah. gonna beat the shit out of you, take your kid away from you." He was Twelve, and that, that that's what he said. He didn't. Yeah. Brutus was more more reasonable. Brutus, it's fucked up. The point is, when I'm when I'm saying Brutus is more reasonable, it's like saying it's like saying. Um, Serial killers are more ace than others. You know what I mean? It's like, look, he might be a serial killer, but at least he doesn't put them in an acid bath. Well, yeah, he might be a serial killer, but at least he doesn't torture them first. Mm. But you know, that's terrible. Oh, that's speaking of torture, did we also want to talk? Seeing as we've done the fantasy thing about like uh, Inner Blighton and really good fantasy, do we want to do some really shit fantasy and talk about the origins of Kwanzaa? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let Phil make his point first. Yeah. Phil? You got the floor, yeah, mate. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's... Toppy, Toppy made Brutus look good. That That's that's some skill. That That's... Yeah. I, I, I'm wondering if the... It may be not the Golden Gun, but the Golden Cunt Awards could be a thing. Yeah. Charlie, so what was Charlie saying in the telegram earlier? He was defending it, wasn't he, under one of his many sock accounts? No, it's based on trad. Well, well, he wasn't. He, he says, I'm not commenting on it. That's where his fingers. He, he was sort of. It's weird. I've been getting Toppy shit all day. And Charlie turns up and he's like, Oh, yeah, I think I think Toppy would beat you in a fight. I said, Charlie, the fight is irrelevant. Did you hear what he said about my kid? He's like, I'm not making any comments on it. And why. The thing is, it's like if you're in PA right now and you've got a person like Top Cat who's just said that, do they have any idea how bad that can go back in their face? Or that can go really fucking bad. Say they became a, a real political party, and the media found that for whatever reason they say, and they say this Top Cat guy who's in your party fucking said this. It's fucking over for them. That's why you have to disavow. So, like we so, he's, so his lockdown enjoyer is that Charlie Big Potatoes, is it? Yeah, yeah. You have to disavow people. You disavow Brutus. When Brutus said fucked up shit, you what? Like, disavow, fuck off, bye. Yeah. You have to do the same with Top Cat. You have to say, sorry, Top Cat, you said something really fucked up. Disavow, bye. Fuck off. Yeah, you said Stop. something fucked up and now you have to go. You have to go away. Go, go be a nonce somewhere else. Uh, he's like, I'm not a nonce, I don't care. That was Nancy. That was Nancy. End of. Yeah, so this is from the Telegram earlier. Um, Turn up where, Meech? You did that much backpedaling, you could have beat Lance, Bar Lance Armstrong backwards, Meech. Uh, oh, yeah. I don't think Charlie understands how bikes work. Right, yeah. <laughs> Pedal backwards, you free whale. He did, he didn't go backwards. Oh, yeah, he's never been backwards on a, on, on a bike. He's, oh, no, he's, unless a, got one he's those, a bike thief. Isn't those it? hipster twat bikes with uh, the fixed the fix gear. and Oh, can, fixie bike. Yeah, the fixie. There's can, no just one gear on my fixie bike. I hate fixies. There's just, there's no need. We, we've, as a society, civilization, we've progressed beyond the need for fixies. And then Phil says, you know what Top Cat said, you know, you, you might have said, well, I thought it was sexy, blah, blah, blah. I haven't commented one or one way or the other, Meech. So, so Charlie's not quite sure how he thinks about Top Cat wanting to, uh, wanting to kidnap Phil's daughter. He's, he's, you know, it's a bit of, <laughs> bit of a difficult one. He's still on the fence on it. Uh, okay, so Rape Cage Architect says, am I allowed back yet? <laughs> just, like, look, <laughs> just because Top Cat made you look good in comparison doesn't mean what you said's like good. Huh. It's it's it, this like to quote quote Hemi. Do you want your dog shit sandwich spread thick or thin? Yeah, yeah. 
we, we, we begin. I, lo I love that. Like <laughs> yeah. Charlie Big Potatoes cannot comment on whether it's okay that Top Cat wanted to kidnap Phil Phil's twelve year old daughter. That's you know that's one of those questions. Oh, I don't really want to come down one side or the other on that one, Mitch. Yeah, it's a very difficult one, isn't it? Especially if yeah, you're yeah, not absolutely standards. It is. Yeah. Like, I'm a fascist. I I've got a hierarchy and standards. Concentration yeah. camp. Who likes? But, uh, yeah. When uh, when it comes to really com complicated shit like this, it's oh, you just don't know what to do, do you? Yeah. I wonder what Hitler would have done. Yeah. Well, I wonder what they would have done. Was Hitler on paedophilia? You know, he weren't sure about it. You know, the pros and cons to it. You know, you, you just gotta gotta have a think about it for a bit longer. Well, the hit so is Toppy actually is Toppy actually an admin in fascist fitness or is it a joke? He is an admin. What we mean by an admin as well is that he posts a picture of a of a photo with a quote once a week. I was going to say, do, does he do like a vetting procedure where like uh, potential applicants have to submit a dick pic? How about this one from Charlie Big? Everyone I don't like is a nonce. The Child's Guide to Politics by Nasbol Philip. Um, oh, no, he no. is a fucking. Oh, 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 you just calling him a nonce? It's like because it's a very noncey thing to hey, say. Hey, look, Charlie. James Shand. That was a that was a woman police officer. You've got you can't say that he's a paedophile because that was a woman police officer he was trying to shag. It's like, ah, oh, Toppy isn't a nonce. He just said, said something that's very, very fucking All right. nonce. So, so yeah. th this make it uh, go into language Charlie understands. If um, Phil was objecting to someone being a bike thief like you, Charlie Big Potatoes, you scales fuck, <laughs> then <laughs> would we say, oh, the child's guide to politics, everyone dislikes a bike thief... You know, if, yeah. if, our, if our sole objection was Scouse bastards nicking bikes all the time, giving a blacks a run for their money, then what? I think, my thing with Charlie was, it's like, Toppy said something that you need to disavow, you're not disavowing it, and that's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you I know, mean, it's obviously there. It's obviously going to have to go to the PA Ethics Committee as to whether, as to whether it's okay or not. That you know, kidn talking about kidnapping pe ch 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 people's children and looking after them. In quotes. Well, th this and is why I'm that. I'm convinced that PA is a pink news organisation because they're all for paedophile rights. Yeah. I mean, the, I I thought I thought the universal line in the sand was paedophilia. No. I thought you know if someone's a fucking nonce, that's it. They're done. They're gone. That's the fucking end of them. Well, that they're just... saying even nonce as well. Like if you say anything nonce, might not be a nonce, but you've said a nonce thing. Well, Hemi, that just goes to show that you're a purity spider who doesn't want nationalism to succeed. Yeah. So if someone said something that was a bit gay. Well, you do, you do the same thing, wouldn't you? Like, like if someone said, yeah. "I'd love to suck a dick," I would. You'd go, "Oh, that's a bit gay, wasn't it?" But you just said, "No, yeah. that's fucked up." <laughs> you're like, "Oh no, I was joking, bro." Ah. Yeah, what's no. wrong with that? This is the, this is the thing. For, uh, uh, um, Charlie Big Potatoes will excuse anything. He used to excuse Ralph. He used to excuse Woes. You know, he'll excuse anybody as long as they're on the inside of PA, and that's the that's the problem with him. He, his moral compass is just spinning wildly, isn't it? Are you racist? Do you hate the Jews? You're in. Also, I'm a. Oh, you know, you can't be racist anymore because what about Shazia Hobbs? Oh yeah. In your ethno nationalist, <laughs> in your ethno nationalist part. Why do we deal with the Jews? It doesn't matter who's on our side. Pedophiles, Nazis, women abusers, fucking... Yeah. As long as they Gener pay us money, I mean, so what? As long as I ain't Jewish, or if they are Jewish, could they just keep it quiet? Yeah, maybe they are Jewish, just don't... Just, in fact, let's just have no principles whatsoever and pretend we have principles. So, something that Toppy does as well, weirdly enough. In which case... Oh, Flossie says, how would Charlie react to Toppy saying that about his daughter? I think Charlie would be confused about it, because obviously he hasn't figured it out. There you go. Ooh. He, he is my enemy. So he's like, if they're on my side, that means that they're... It doesn't matter what they say about your enemy. Yes, it mm. does. Yeah. I mean, it's like... To be fair, to be fair, we've never actually lied. We've never lied about anybody. Everything we've ever said about people is, is, is regards stuff they've said on said on live streams and stuff they've done in fucking real life. 
We've never had to make up shit about people. I haven't made any shit up. He said it. He, start, he fucking started it. I don't even want to make shit up about it. I mean, I was hoping that at the start of the, the, the week, I was like, oh, you know what? It's going to be a nice, quiet day. Top Cat's obviously done a load of shit, so he's, he's not going to pop his head up for a while. And uh, we'll get to talk about Ina Blight and talk about fancy. And I can say, yeah, you know, I like uh, Tolkien and Lord of the Rings, but at the same oh, yeah. time. Oh, you got a message? Do, do the. Do the, do the oh, oh, hold on. Chickaboo! Chickaboo! There we go. Chickaboo! Chickaboo! Uh, nearly there. Right. <laughs> Just leave me alone! What? He, what is he, he alone? Is he crying out in pain as he strikes you? Is that what he's doing? Yeah. Leave me alone. That's what he said. Yeah. Uh, Damien's got a quote from uh, Jimmy Savile that kind of covers this. The only thing Gary Glitter did wrong was take his computer to be prepared to PC world. Oh. Oh. Leave Top Cat alone. Leave me alone, he uh, says. Red cage architect says, Charlie Big Potatoes, eh? Stranger just chipped a child-sized cage to Spain to a Mr. Potatoes. I assumed it was a fake name. I guess oh, right, Tom. I thought it'd be top you're saying brothers. leave you alone. It's like you're, you're saying leave you alone. You've been you've been fucking been a right cunt to everyone for about three weeks now. You, you, you've fucked over fucking Emmy's fucking chat. You've been saying vile shit about Flossie. Really vile fucking shit. My missus. I miss it. There's no one he hasn't. There's no one he hasn't fucking attacked, and he keeps going on and on and on and on, and he won't shut the fuck up. He did a stream, uh, and uh, you know, a stream that Phil, that Phil didn't know about called I, "My Interview with Fast Phil." It's like, and he wants he wants you to leave him alone. How about you just fuck off, Top Cat? Just fuck off. Yeah. We'll come back just again. fuck off. Hang around you stupid. Hang around you stupid fucking gay groups or whatever, and sort your fucking life out, you larper. Sort yeah. your fucking shit out and don't, don't be saying vile shit like that ever again. Hang out of order. Top cat, stop yeah. acting like a twat for but, one week. But remember, 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 Phil. Heroes sometimes fail. Yeah, it's all right. Oh, that's well, okay to keep failing and failing and failing over and over oh, again we, because heroes sometimes we, fail. Well, me. no more than that. Quite, quite accurately, uh, heroes often fail. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. There's, there's failing and then there's massively fucking up. I mean, saying, yeah, I've been convicted of rape. We all make mistakes. No, no, fuck off. That's, is that, there's minor mistakes that we go, oh, do you know what? I lost my job. Um, oh, I forgot to do this. I fucked up. I called so someone a cunt when I was angry. You know, that's oh. that's fucking up, isn't it? Yeah, but, oh, 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 I, I said I'd kidnap someone's daughter. Oh, well, that's a bit of a, bit of a fucking... But a bit of a major area you've got there, mate. That's... Yeah, I, I, you know, top cat, top cat, like spilling like stuff from our VCs, like stuff that we don't talk about on shows. That's fucked up. Which is some serious fucking fed behaviour. Yeah, 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 that's yeah, like, right. look what I've got on you. Yeah, you call my daughter a whore, like Bjarki said as well. You call my daughter a whore. Jesus as well. fucking Christ. Yeah, and this yeah, is great you, because. Man. You know, well, I'm, I'm not sure what we'd talk about. I've more just like shows and culture and things oh. like that. But now, now it's like, okay, well done, Top Cat. You once again created the centre of attention. You've literally shit yourself in public, and now we're, we're talking about you. And he's like, ah, well, if they're talking about you, then you're winning. We're talking. Yeah, about if you're getting flack, you're over the target. For, yeah, actually, you know, Alex Jones says that, but I think, he, you know, he, he, when well, he it's, it's like the toppy toppy takes it out of context, like that, like, like the heroes sometimes fail. Uh, heroes sometimes fail is that is that you know you don't have to succeed all of the time, but heroes sometimes fail does not cover shit in the bed in the way Top Cat does. I don't do, heroes often are heroes the sort of people that say. Wait, oh, you're 12 year old door. I find her sexually attractive. And she's oh, heroes, a whore. heroes often fail covers like uh, Robert the Bruce. You know the story of Robert the Bruce when he was in the in the cave. In the cave oh, yeah, and, and he saw like, the spider. He was, yeah, he was getting fucked. He, he was he, he was completely fucked. He was in like a dead end. He was like absolutely 
demoralised, uh, you know, on the, on, you know, he's on his last legs, weren't he? And then he saw that little that little spider kept the web kept getting fucked up, and the and the little spider carried on, made his web. That's heroes sometimes fail. Heroes sometimes fail. It's not fucking puking down yourself, and cu- and calling calling a woman that's not interested in you, bringing her up and going love you, love you. That's not heroes sometimes fail. That's that is failing. That is just straight up fucking failing. That that's creating your own problems. Oh, yours, you you're actually the opposite of your your losers sometimes sometimes succeed. That's what you are. Yeah, losers sometimes succeed. Sometimes a loser can pick a heavy thing up. Oh, that's what you are. Here we go. Right, so I'm gonna change the capture. This is hits. Heroes often fail. Right, the Seven Up story. Being stubborn is part of being a winner. My father used to tell us this story about a guy who loved soda, so he went to the soda business, the product called Free Up. It failed, so he started again, product called Four Up. Failed too, so he decided to name the product Five Up and worked just as hard to make it work, but sure enough, it failed again. He realized he still loved soda, so he tried to give him a product named Six Up. It failed, and he gave up completely. Then a few years later, someone else came up with the soda product and named it Seven Up, which became a huge success. Whether the seven up story is true oh okay, I thought the guy was like on the seventh attempt he actually got it right. We hoping it could yeah. inspire people to thinking of giving up to press for that. So we we actually got the audio of Red Dog. Well I suppose you could you could you could change this about Toppy where Toppy's the six up guy, isn't he? He needs to he's, he needs to leave someone else to come and fucking come up with seven up, doesn't he? Yeah, I'm oh, sorry, th- this is the wrong sort of like message I'm sending forth here because they're saying the message from the seven up story is never to give up, but Top Cat, the message from us is, what's the Samaritan's number again? Um, yeah, exactly. Y- you you need to you need to go to in fact the, you need to go to the Samaritans. In fact, let's go um, Samaritans, and so Samaritans Samaritans dot org. Call one one six one one six one two three from your mobile. There we go. One one six one two three. You just talk to them and say, look, um, I need help. And then just go on yeah. from there, and and that that's it. You just you sort of go go on from there. And go you... fucking church. Like you're always going on about Christian identity. Go fucking church, Top Cat. How about you do that? Yeah. How about you, church. if you really believe in Christian identity and that stuff? How about you actually like personally say to Jesus Christ, "Look, I'm a sinner. I have sinned, um, but I want to accept. I've you know, redeem me." And you start with the Our Father. Then you say a Hail Mary, and then you go to church, and I, I, you go to confession. Just go to confession. He hasn't even got to go to Catholic church. Why don't you just go to a fucking regular, regular church, listen uh-huh. to what the guy's saying, but, take the fucker in, and start living by it? But, like, Catholic church is regular church for me. A proper church, is it? It, it is a proper church. It was a Actually, ch- Toppy would fit, fit right in at Catholic church, wouldn't he? Uh, church for no, nonsense, I, isn't I dislike that, right? That, that, that's just small hat propaganda. And yes, it does go on. I'm not. I'm not like uh, saying it doesn't happen. But the only times, like wherever there's like some impropriety in, in religion, the only time they ever ever talk about it is with the Catholic faith. They never talk about Protestants, Orthodox, Muslims, Jews, or Buddhists. Uh, it, well, on a, on a real note, it's um, it's access to children and power over people, isn't it? You, that's why you find them at scout groups and things like. That. It's not that scout groups are full of paedophiles, but paedophiles go to scout groups, don't they? Yeah, the, the, because of the access to uh, powerless people. It's it's like saying, "Wow, all these drug abusers go to places where drugs are available." It's amazing. Don't start simping for junkies, eh? Because you know my thoughts on junkies, don't you? Um, like, wrong. The, only, the only good junkies are dead junkies. Simple as. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Smack a gang rise up. <laughs> Smack well, it, gang rise up. Well, Phil, you see, the problem in, in your statement there is you're asking smackheads to do anything when they'd well, rather well, just Well, what Toppy needs to do, he needs to either find Smack or Jesus, then he? I think that's basically what we're saying, aren't we? Why not Maybe both? Maybe to take Smack so we can find Jesus. I was going to say, yeah. Um, you do both at the same time. Start praying the Jesus and take take the heroin. <laughs> okay, I'll just thought of a way of justifying heroin. Yeah. It's like just went into the desert yeah, to find God. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's what smackheads do. They they take the smackhead route and that's how they find God. It is a way of finding God. A lot of smackheads do find God. Yeah. 
Oh my god, take heroin. It was it was it said that uh, uh, religion's I, the, religion's the opium of the masses. Karl Marx. I think I need to oh. say now, like I publicly disavow the statements of uh, self abuse. And you, if you're thinking of taking heroin, ring one one six one two three and talk to the Samaritans. Um, yeah. But in the case of of Top Cat, you know, do take heroin and do talk to Jesus at the same time. Oh, you boots up. Yeah. You, you know, put down the steroid needle and pick up the heroin needle. Watch Noddy. Yeah, pull these boots up. Just watch Noddy Top Cat. Yeah, no, no, yeah Noddy's good. Uh, I, 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 I don't disavow that. That That's a good thing you could watch. What I want to do is... Let's don't, I don't, under any circumstances, listen to Gordon Lightfoot, though. No, watch no. Noddy, replace your bot. No, I'm not going to say that. Watch Noddy all day. Hey, hey, do the bot, man. Snoddy all day yeah. and go to it. You'll be a respectable. Res no have, a, have a day. Have a day in bed with Bart. Have a day off of being a fucking prick, mate. Yeah, just just come up with Bart. But Bart, Bart will. Bart, Bart won't judge you. Yeah. Actually, is anybody else with a pair of ears will apart from Charlie Big Potatoes because he's got so used to fucking defending the indefensible that he just I, does uh, it on reflex though. I was I don't think we can we can recommend um uh Noddy to Top Cat because he'll start looking at his Bart dolls like don't you get ideas you're staying with me forever. Yeah, Bart will start getting jealous. He's gonna have to the phone line. I'm getting anywhere, Bart. If Bart does come alive, he's going to run out that fucking door straight away. In the right fucking now. Straight down yeah. fucking NSPCC. Fucking Bart. <laughs> I, I mean, I hope Bart can recover from the trauma that's been inflicted to him. Maybe he too the can. Things he's, the things that Bart though's seen. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, Noddy got off lightly in comparison to, to Bart. Oh. Well, Noddy was fucked up. Look at Noddy. Life well, yeah, but you know, considering what Noddy, I think Noddy is an example of a success story, despite the adversity. Yeah, bootstraps. He yeah. bootstrapped himself, didn't he? Yeah. Walked into Toy Town, penniless, naked. <coughs> so how he did it with a car, didn't he? So, Sorted. So how did he? Top the I, Am I going to have to start reading, um, like Noddy, so I can figure out how he got like the. Um, how it, how he got like his success and how, how he bootstrapped bootstrapped himself. Yeah, you know, did did, did he get? A, I don't think he was a baker or anything. What 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 job did Noddy do? Did he did he have a job? Uh, he helped solve mysteries, didn't he? So he was a private investigator. Someone said in the chat he was a taxi driver. Noddy was a taxi driver. All right, okay, yeah, I'll go with that. So Noddy he was a taxi driver. He's he's a commercial driver, so he got his um his license at. The Toyland uh, driving centre. Uh, actually, actually, Noddy sounds quite a bit like Charlie Big Potatoes. He's very childlike in his understanding of the world, and often becomes confused as a result. I mean, like Charlie Big Potatoes, you know, he can't he can't come down one side or the other with, on whether it's wrong for fourteen year old girls to be kidnapped by um, by men who have um, questionable morals. Wow, you, you know, you, you say questionable morals, but. Really, you're you're just trying to slander and libel against Top Cat. I don't know what the difference between slander. Hey, Noddy and built is. his own house. Did he? Noddy and Big Ears are building Noddy's house for one. Noddy suggests they build the roof first in case it rains. But how are you going to put a roof oh, yeah. up with no walls? Messy. Oh, hold on, hold on. That's on the statements of Flossie. I'm blocked from posting. Good. Flossie, I am sorry for the harsh remarks. I hope you do have children one day. I don't believe you. Yeah, fuck off, Tuppy. Why don't you say sorry for uh, threatening to kidnap my daughter? What well, that as well, Tuppy? Oh, you know that's one of those. That's one of those like fat on the fence issues. You know, no, nobody, nobody really has an opinion about uh, kidnapping daughters, do they? Well, think? that's just water under the bridge, Phil. I mean, you know, what? Why, yeah. why are you getting so upset about like? Your, your own flesh and blood being threatened by, by. Uh, I know. also think it's too late for you to apologize, apologize to uh, Flossie or or um, in, in Christianity as well. But what what's the word? Is it? You can't just say sorry in Christianity, can you? You have to do works. Is that right? Am well, I, right I, I, that? I think the the thing is like saying it's not my position to forgive you. Only God can do that. Right. Yeah. Mm. 
you've got, yeah. to, you've got to work, you've got to do shit. So, like, I mean, like, sorry to be a bit sort of medieval-pilled here, but back in the olden days, if someone said you, you can't be... No, you know, D DMing Phil is a bit of a fucking mealy-mouthed apology. Why doesn't he do one of his fucking... One of his uh, high and mighty fucking I am um, I am standard streams and apologise to Flossie. Wow, I think you're asking a bit too much there. Yeah, a fucking pathetic twat, isn't he? He's real. He's realised he's actually shit the bed this time, doesn't he? Has he? Wow. Well, see. The thing. The thing is, though, to 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 Toppy's not not sorry for what he's done. Toppy's only sorry for being caught, isn't he? That's right. the kind of guy Toppy is, isn't it? Well, yeah, I mean... oh, and that's why he's sorry. He isn't actually sorry. He, he would have would have DM'd him a long time ago. Like you've been you've been saying shit to Flossy for, for fucking weeks and weeks, man. It's the yeah. I imagine North, there's there's, North... A, there's acres of uh, comments on it. Which video of mine is it? The comments are on. Uh... I imagine Nordic's not here because he. Like like me, just he's uh, recusing him. He's training him. on Sunday, isn't he? Oh, I thought he was recusing himself so that he wouldn't say anything fed posty. Oh yeah, he probably he probably would if he knew what if he knew what was going on. Right, it's not that video. Yeah. Uh, Nordic doesn't like women being abused very much, or at all for that matter. Oh, it looks like Toppy's deleted all of his comments. Oh, that's a shame. I wonder why. Yeah. He would, I wonder why he'd do such a thing. Yeah, why would he do such a thing? Surely he'd be able to stand by his. Um, yeah, he's deleted all of his YouTube comments. Do you think those in there's the, the ones he reports to in Greater Manchester Police? Do you think they've said you fucked up now and you're you're a liability, not an asset? And if that happens, there will be... Oh, no, 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 I found, I found it. Right, so, this is top of you, sorry. MB, if I were flossy, I'd be eternal to grateful to every UK taxpayer. Unfortunately, how she and others continue to conduct themselves. MB, I've not pretended and never will pretend to be unwashed, or anyone else for that matter. MB, meaning no to uh, Spacey Benny. Tracy, you're absolutely pathetic. Uh, what else have we got here? Why is uh, she at Flossy and an all and all round now nasty cowardly piece of work. Keep on talking, keep on lying, and uh, do you know how many how many sentences starts starts with and? And for, uh, to think he went to a grammar school as well and found out where where that type of behaviour gets you in life. Spoiler: surrounded by rabbits with only anonymous internet internet accounts for friends. So, Flossy, apparently, you stream. This is from Top Cat again. You stream about Flossy. You stream about me for hours on end in a desperate attempt to win approval from on anonymous internet accounts. Then you tell me, and and full stop. And then you tell me to leave you alone. Uh, what else, Flossy? You're absolutely pathetic beyond help. Unfortunately, nature. Fortunately, nature is running its course with you. Maybe Fossey uh, ought let's... to have a right to reply to this. Um, oh, she's in the comments. Fair enough. I was going to say maybe do this on the Tuesday show. Yeah, this is this is the. Uh, well, it well, can yeah, be it repeated can be. on the Tuesday show, can't it? Yeah, and and and, and it needs to be repeated because this bloke is fucking scum. He really is. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll say it here because I've said it before in private, so I'm going to repeat it for public record now. When Top Cat first came in, like, in, ingratiated himself amongst our group, I had the creep straight away. So did Flossie. She late confided in me. Uh, you, you as well, Hemi, you got the creeps from him. But we were all being polite. And it just, like, I, I was bemused. He seemed kind of okay. He seemed like an okay guy that just needed the rough edges knocking off him, didn't he? I found him boring. But at the same time, I thought, well, if he's come here, he wants to learn something. So... I'll just I'll be polite and um, yeah. You just like the creepy behaviour had around me, which doesn't need to be repeated, and it's just again it's like uh, I I thought right I'll just you know what's the word I'm looking for I thought I'll be friendly that's it I was going to be friendly, and uh, my mm. my friendship was abused and my my trust was misplaced. So egg is on my face. Yeah, Charlie, yeah. Charlie Big Potato said that we uh, we took we took Tucker on to gain legitimacy. How do you how do you uh, 
How do you gain legitimacy from a piece of shit like Top Cat? What, what, what sort of legitimacy were we hoping to... What favour were we hoping to curry? This this doesn't compute. I, I don't... I think Charlie Big Potato's got his own problems there, really. Mm. You know, this uh, this doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Ugh. Right, uh, was there was there some was there, I don't really feel like uh, Yeah top cut anyway. If you wanna say sorry you should do it you know, you should do a stream where you say sorry about what you've done. Repent uh, via your voice, not text. Anonymously. Probably Has anyone know. seen this story? UK's longest COVID patient dies after deciding he could not live like this anymore. And the UK's longest COVID patient who has spent the past 14 and a half months in hospital has died after choosing to withdraw treatment. What the fuck were they doing to him? Is that the one who, like, kept putting him in the news? No, 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 he's out of hospital now, isn't he? Oh, okay. Right. I wasn't paying too much um, attention. Jason Kelk, 49, passed away peacefully yesterday, surrounded by his family. He was admitted to James Hospital in Leeds, March 31st last year. Remained there until Friday morning when he was transferred to it. Oh, oh fuck! They did, they did the full fucking lot on him. He, he had, he had a tracheotomy by the look of it. Jesus, that's that's. They really fucked him over. That's oh yeah, I've cool. seen that guy. That, that's the one who had long COVID. Any, he? he's had like mm. had it for a year or something. Well, I was talking yeah, with... Virus ravaged his lungs and destroyed his kidneys. Well, I don't think he had COVID then, did he? I, this was the thing. Um, I was talking to my mum about it. I said, do you remember when SARS came out? And that, that was a pretty deadly disease. Um, mm. But we didn't, like, shut down the world as we know Hold on a minute. I've got a line to read out. Jason, who had type 2 diabetes and asthma, had been fighting for his life in intensive care since 3rd of April last year. Oh, Alphabet Cat said he also had some gastrointestinal disease, probably related to diabetes. Um, yeah. With someone in my family... Is that, that, how, they, they've, they've put that at least half half the way down the article. So what it should be is man with diabetes uh, struggles to cope with COVID, isn't it? Man with diabetes struggles with illness. I mean, anybody who knows someone with diabetes knows they, they struggle with illness. So I, I've got someone in my family and he's got diabetes and... He, he can hardly digest food anymore. He's uh, very skinny. Mm. It, it is sad. But it's just the fucking lies that are, per that are perpetrated in the in the name of COVID. Uh, so, where's that? Oh fuck! Have I closed that one down? That uh, Tory MP who's had his house set fire two, three times. You seen? You seen that one? Didn't you? No, no. Why? Was he saying black lives don't matter? Why is there such a massive uh, queue here? Tory councillor, Tory councillor's house and cars set on fire for the third time. Uh, Tory councillor has been targeted in an arson attack in what is believed to be the third such incident. Oh, Scotland. There we go. Oh, okay. That's that's a bit different if it's Cause Scotland. Because you, you're not allowed to uh, hold uh, hold different. Uh, Different views. What the you? hell's wrong with Scotland? It's a life on Benny's, isn't it? It's the, basically, the country's on Benny's, isn't it? Well, they they weren't always like that. At one point, they did have like functional industry, and then it got taken away. Phil, what's what's your opinion on the deindustrialization of Scotland? It's muted and deafened. Oh, okay. Well, when he gets back, ask him, because uh, I'd like his opinion on that. He, he's pretty good on that sort of, like, oh, yeah, the Tories are scumbags and they take people's jobs away. In fact, n even Nordic's opinion on that would be um, legit. Am I going to do a different train... <laughs> ITV reporter shouts, I'll fucking bang you out after man interrupts broadcast. Oh... Is that is that the one like in Parliament where they're having the lockdown protests? No, this is um I'll find out. Reporter for ITV has become the news himself after losing his temperature and I'll fucking bang you out at a man he claims interrupted his piece to camera. 
Callum Watkinson asked if asked the man if he had a job himself, then it then suggested it was likely to be either McDonald's or Foot Locker or Foot Locker if so. Well that's a bit uh, presumptuous. So ITV has apologized. Uh, oh it's in Birmingham. Oh. Oh blum. Oh, just gonna go get some petrol for the car. It happened on Broad Street in Birmingham City Centre where Watkinson told the man, Don't fucking do it and I won't come into your workplace and start fucking with you, idiot. Oh, if you keep talking shit like that, you'll be closing for the browsing. <laughs> so, uh, why don't you go get a job and I'll come behind you and start being an idiot? Do you know how hard it is to broadcast live to half a million people? Do you know how hard it is to concentrate? It's quite hard without someone in the background going, Ooh, I'm on TV. <laughs> well, you know... Oh, hang on. What, if it was Brummian saying that sort of stuff, what, what's the witty reponder this... to that? It's like... Do they teach you how to deal with heckles in journalist school, you fucking knobhead? Yeah. But uh, it goes to show how these people think they're a cut above us now, don't they? Oh, of course they are. I mean, we're scum, and, and like, how dare yeah. we breathe the same air as them? That's that's their general attitude. How uh, cannabis could save the planet in a fight against climate change? Okay... Yeah, it grows quickly. Yeah, they're, they're doing the old, they're doing the old hempers paper and um, yeah, it, textiles. It, it grows, yeah, it grows quickly. Whoop de shit. Carbon dioxide's the only pollution we got. Award. It's not even pollution. It's like saying oxygen's pollution. It's not. We need it to breathe. You need carbon dioxide. If you don't have carbon dioxide, plants can't breathe, and then you're fucked. Oh, uh, Noah's Ark has been impounded in Ipswich for not having paperwork to say it's seaworthy. Yeah, that's right. There's a Dutch scumbag, and he's got, yeah. like, uh, Noah's Ark in He's Ipswich. dumped his shit in our country, hasn't he? Well, yeah, it's typical with the Dutch. They are scum. I, mean, I, I know I've, I might have said this once or twice before, but I think I got away with it. Uh, runaway giant tortoise found one mile from home after escaping guard. <laughs> what? Little bugger. I don't think runaway is the correct type term for... for a, yeah. Uh, Titan, who weighs nine stone, lives in a garden in Suffolk where he's penned in by a three-foot-tall fence. Is known or has no idea how he escapes his enclosure and believes he may have teleported out. Um, took three coppers to lift up lift up Titan. What, nine stone? Uh, yeah. How much is stone in kilograms? They are so coppers, so, though, aren't they? So, like, how, how many pounds... How many pounds is that? Tell, I, I know. One times fourteen. All right, so that's like one hundred and forty pounds minus that. That's one hundred and twenty-six pounds. So what? That's like sixty kilograms. Oh, that's fairly heavy. Yeah, okay. It's nine times ten is ninety plus nine four four nines are uh, oh thirty-six. So one hundred and twenty-six pounds. Yeah. That's fairly heavy. Yeah. That, yeah. So, you know, I will grant you that. Only 50 kg, though, isn't it? That's not a lot, is it? Well, yeah, uh, the maximum that uh, the guidelines say a man's allowed to lift is 25 kilograms. So, yeah, because that was how. Yeah. What? Is that like a bag of cement? Not like that, yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, what else we got here? I'm looking in the weird news section for this. A uh, woman has heart attack after trying dangerous TikTok trend. Huh. Advice oh. for any kids out there: do all of this, do all of the TikTok trends, do all of them. Yeah, they they don't say and don't you can. don't don't do this at home. Now it's just a case of hey, if you think it, it'll be cool, you you do it, you fucking do it. Yeah, it's cool. It is definitely uh, cool. To oh, Phil, Phil's muted. Phil, are you coming back in? We we're going to ask you about Scotland. Yeah, that's right. That's not ready yet. No. Uh, so a new TikTok craze caused by a fit and caused a fit and healthy twenty-year-old woman to suffer a heart attack. The dry scoop challenge. Have you heard of this one, Hobbit? What's it? No. Tell me. It's sweeping across the social media platform, but it could be incredibly dangerous if Briat Briatney. I think that's supposed to be Brittany, but it's spelt Briatney. Portillo's story is anything to go by. In April, the student ingested a mouthful of pre-workout protein powder without diluting it with water for an energy boost. A boost. Oh. Uh, sweating prof... Go on, then. I was going to say, I mean, there's all these sort of, like, things of, like, LOL, let's put, like, concentrating powders into our mouth and see what happens. Like, washing up detergent... Oh, bad, bad, news is, bad news is she's narrating it, so she's not dead. 
Oh. Okay. Yeah. So what, she, she took PT some... PT scans revealed she'd suffered a small heart attack and was told by doctors she had a sensitivity to caffeine she'd previously been unaware of. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't even drink iron brew anymore now. I uh, can't stomach it. Iron brew doesn't it. have caffeine in, does it? Iron brew does have caffeine, yeah. yeah. You didn't know. It's, it's got caffeine in, mate. Oh, a pilot has been suspended after a man duct taped to a helicopter and flown over a field. Man duct taped to a helicopter. So what was he pissed off with the guy? It's like I'm going to duct tape. Actually, you. a Russian pilot is under under investigation. Oh, okay. I thought they didn't have any laws in Russia. What? They, I, I, I assume they have some. Hmm. I think I need to make a bridge for this. Let's, let's make a little one. Um... Can I do a bridge there? Oh yeah, we were going to do Diddley Squat Farm, weren't we? Oh, that's right, yeah. So, uh, Jeremy Clarkson's got a farm shop where you can buy a loaf of bread for £5 and a jar of honey for £9. Sounds reasonable. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's, the, it's the Jeremy Clarkson... I want to retire. It's probably what he thinks is a fair price because he. Don't, I can't imagine that he really uses money that often, does he? It's the it's the Jeremy Clarkson I pension fund. You can contribute to his pension fund. You, oh, and they also got T-shirts there, so you know it's got a merch store. Fuck you know. Avoid going anywhere near Diddley Squat Farm Shop. The whole road is blocked again. But worse, there are people stopping on the sixty mile an hour bend with nowhere to go. Fuck me. Oh, uh, yeah, no, you, you do not want to stop there because people... On that bend, you will be doing 60 miles an hour. Um, well, I'm, I'm revealing a bit of local knowledge here, aren't I? Uh, I know it happens to be... Speaking about his experiences since taking over the running of the farm in 2019, he added, I woke up every morning at 6 o'clock and just thought, I can't wait to get back, back out there on my tractor and do a crop walk. Or spot all the little diseases that the wheat or barley has. Dinley Squat Farm Shop opens in 2020 and has a small barn full of good, no nonsense things. No, it doesn't sell kale. Uh, yeah, you got you got carrots and cabbages, apples. Just it, it is like local produce, so you know that for that reason it's pretty good. But um, there are other shops in the vicinity which also sell local produce at a um, not as expensive. Um, oh, tot laughter and relief as Tottenham Stadium becomes mass vaccination centre. Laughter and relief. That's yeah. I'm I'm sorry, but like a medical procedure is not something that, that gives me laughter and relief. I'm I I don't I I think that's the an inappropriate term. I don't think that's right. I mean, ca call me like some kooky conspiracy theorist, but I think like going to the doctors is a somber affair. It's not a cause for joy and celebration. Susan Hopkins on the possibility of winter lockdowns. Well, we know there's going to be winter lockdowns. Let's not, let's not get this shit fucking twisted. Well, they, they, they're not even going to... There's just going to be permanent lockdowns. I'm, I'm sorry to be that black pill. It's just permanent out. excuses. Yeah. It's like, oh, we've got this new power and nobody's kicking off about it, so we're just going to keep this going and going. And eventually it won't even be about uh, diseases, real or imaginary. They'll just say, well, look, uh, climate change. Wow, my game's grinding to a halt. If I... There is a lot of foot traffic. Why is everyone, so why are all the footballers shitting on Coca-Cola? I know where uh, Ronaldo was because he's got his own water brand, doesn't he? But apparently Locatelli has followed Ronaldo okay. in moving Coca-Cola bottles away from him. So, I, I guess, like, people have had enough of Coca-Cola and they're, like, en masse just shitting on it. I mean, yeah. Coca-Cola have done a lot of shitty things. I mean, I'm, I'm not some fucking communist like Phil, but even I dislike... Sure. Yeah, okay. Even I dislike the shitty practices that Coca-Cola do, and I want to see them ground into dirt. Right, let's see if that improves matters somewhat. Uh, let's see what the sun's got. Oh, that's, the, that's the that's the metro done. Do you want to go sun, mirror, or I think I've got the star in me favourite, so... Ooh, ah, daily star. Say, ooh, ah, daily star. 
fucking call me rag that is, isn't it? Uh, no, I ain't got the Daily Star in here for some reason. Hey, all these people are floating onto the bridge. Oh, do you the want bridge. the mirror food news? I've got food news here as a Yeah, bookmark. okay, we'll, we'll do some mirror food news. Mum of 16 shares what cooked breakfast looks like for Australia's largest family. Oh, uh, Alphabet Cat says climate change, traffic congestion, crime rates, the lockdowns will get used for all of that. Um, so, what? Oh, but did you know you've been cooking an onion wrong? Or the, the professional chef says the right way to cook an onion and it'll blow your mind. Oh, go on then. Chef has gone viral, blah, 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 video, blah, 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 Michelin. Michelin trained chef protects the root of the onion, peels it and uses a series of different cuts and slices to achieve a finely chopped version of the vegetable. Right, so in other words, doing like yeah, I, I've seen Gordon Ramsay dicing an onion, and I think he's he's got it he's got it the right way. So I'm just going to defer to Gordon Ramsay. Have on you ever it. heard this one? She said um, about garlic, Hobbit. I recommend a jar for cutting garlic. You put the cloves in there and shake it quite vigorously, and then when they, and when they and they all come out peeled. Yeah, the alternatively, you can crush the garlic clove, and then it's very easy to peel as well. So, what with a flat blade of a knife? Uh, yeah, you you just you crush your garlic and then the the paint the it all just comes off. And what the hell are these people doing? That there are so many people waiting to get on this train. It's just a huge. Can I do a path from one caramel. to the other? What the fuck is caramel? Um, mm, got... big Big Macs were cheap yesterday, weren't they, for the uh, England Scotland game? Really? What? Uh, McDonald's are doing Oh, a new diet, vegan so. Kit Kat is available in stores from today. <laughs> uh, I'll pass. Yeah. Ooh. b and M shop has divided over a Cadbury's new 12 bar. Some argue it's the same as a timeout. Yeah, can't deny it's the same as a timeout. <laughs> is 12 like a flake which is covered in chocolate? Yeah, so uh, basically they're right. It's the same as a timeout. So it's called a twelve bar. So it's wafer twelve wafer. A uh, uh, Bayer Ray's asking: Is there an India DLC for this game where they all hang on the outside of the train? Uh, no, but I'm sure there's a mod where you can have Indian trains. And I'm going to have a look at the details of this line because with the, all the thousands of people here, I think. Yeah, there's 4,000 people waiting to get on, and the trains only do 240, so let's just do, uh, let's do 10 trains, see how that makes a difference. Oh, do, do, you, do you want to do the one, um, we try best celebrity booze, Kylie Minogue, P. Diddy, Ryan Reynolds and more. Has anybody actually drunk, um, like, two packs invention, the Alizade? I don't know. So anyway, so what, Philip Schofield's got a wine, oh, I'm not sure I'd want to touch that bottle, uh, so it's Benevito Falangina, which is oh, an Italian white wine. Do you know that Gino uh, guy, Gino De Campo? He's yeah, got, I like Gino De Campo. He's got like when he a, cooked a rat on I'm a Celebrity. Oh, dear. Uh, no, I've never watched that. But I did watch the one where he's um, he takes uh, Gordon Ramsay and some French uh, cocktail maker to his oh, right, uh, villa. Oh, right, is there an Indian DLC where they all hang on the outside of the train? Uh, I don't know anything about that. So, do you know De Campo? He makes his own wine. I think wine. it was a joke, Hobbit. Yes, I just, like, that. that's that's what... I, I responded to that about five minutes ago, but you're reading headlines. It's all right, I do the same thing on 4TM Word, so you ask my opinion, so I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> so, I just, that's... Ah... That's, uh, um, but yeah, Gino De Campo uh, gave some of his wine to uh, Gordon Ramsay, and Gordon Ramsay is a bit of a, a sensitive kid, really. Curmudgeon. Curmudgeon. Do you remember that time he had like a little bit of salmon, and then he was like thrown open the bin for about an hour on, on Ramsay's kitchen nightmares. I, I mean, and he's making a right old fucking fuss about it. I know some. So there's like some people who are like super tasters where they got very sensitive uh, sense of taste and smell. I, I doubt. Good, I doubt Gordon Ramsay's that man. Well, he's a very sensitive soul. That's for he's sure. He's a very sensitive boy. Yeah, he's very sensitive. And uh, when he offered, when Gino De Campo offered him some of his wine, he did the uh, polite thing and said, um, "It tastes like petrol." This is foul. How do you drink this? I hate you. 
and then he proceeded to piss in Gina DeCampo's wife's face and yeah. said that she'll never have children, even though the six children were there. Oh, speaking of six children, you mentioned that Australia story. How many children have they got? Are they like Sue and Mike Radford? Sixteen. Sixteen. They're amateurs, mate. They're amateurs. Wait, that's more than the Radfords. Radfords have got 20, 18, 20, haven't they? I thought they had like... Oh, I don't know. All right. How, how many... Have oh, I got a guy called Radfords? Yeah, let, let's, do, let's do the... Uh, Radfords versus uh, Radfords down under. Who's who's the bigger family? Mike, how can they even fit four thousand people on one platform? That's insane. Me too. I told you. Tw- twenty. So the Radfords have got twenty. Twenty-two children. Yeah, the Chad, the Chad Radfords versus the Virgin, uh, whatever the Aussie family are. But what the, the Bruce and Sheila? Yeah. There's so many people on this platform that some of them are on the train tracks. Holy shit, the Radfords went to Al- Alton Towers. I bet they got fucking sponsored for it, though. I, I was going to say that... that did... Oh, the daughter of Britain's biggest family moves out of home to live with her boyfriend. Ah, yeah, that's... Um, how old is she? Is she 23? 16? 25, Chloe. Wow, she, she like, survived 25 it was years. The one, she was the one who was born when her mum was 13. Ah, yeah, that's... 14. They conceived when she was 13. Yeah. Yeah. They uh, took the Bruce the Bruce pill, the Brutus pill. Like the Top Cat pill now, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Fucking Top Cat. What, why'd, you, what, why'd you have to do this? What a fucking spastic. Anyway, they, these, uh, these, drink, these boozes. Uh, so Prince Charles's 40 quid bottle of gin, Hobbit. High Grove Organic London Dry Gin. So, oh, oh, uh, uh, Philip yeah. Schofield's wine got two out of five. By the way, bit of a bitter aftertaste, apparently. Oh, it would it, like leave you feeling very sleepy and gives you an awful headache. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the High Grove Organic Gin. What what we say? Intense flavour, bursting with citrus and rosemary notes. Per- perfect for a tall ICG and tea sundowner, if a bit overpriced. Yeah, I was going to say, that that's a, well, I thought £40, pounds, £40, £30 pounds for a bottle of gin. How about the Kylie Minogue rosé? Um, so what, what the taster says, tastes a bit like a very bog-standard rosé wine you might find on tap at an average British boozer, and it feels like it might give you a hangover, a void not cheap either. Ooh, you fucker. Well, all right, that that's uh, I think that's about as good as you can get for a Kylie Minogue-endorsed uh, alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie's bottle of rosé, 12 quid a bottle. Uh, lightly fragrant on the nose, pleasant wine which feels expensive and complex. You could happily quaff this with Fruits de Mer, Club 55 in Saint-Tropez. So that's five out of five that gets. Gary Gamer says that Kitchen Nightmares about the last good thing on TV. What about um, ki- uh, Home SOS with the cleaning? It's like watch the last 48, Gary Gary. De- Gary. What about... Like, Last 48 is the most racist programme on TV. Ah, oh, what's that then? It's just... It, well, it's called the first 48 because, you know, like the easy, the best time to catch a murderer is in the first, first 48 hours of it. Okay? Oh, so is it like Crime Watch, but they haven't caught up to it yet? It's like... They, it's just one case and they're usually like hassling some black, some black guy that's shot someone. Oh, fair enough. Um... The one which I thought was quite good is that show on Channel 5, which is like how clean is your house. And they go into houses and they're very dirty and then they clean them up and then the house is clean. I like those shows. Holy shit, have you seen Pete Doherty now? He's bloated. Uh, He was getting bloated in the early 2000s as well. Fucking hell, he looks like... uh... So, know, so I'm, he's I'm off. To... He's off the heroin. And he's on the biscuits now. Yeah, he's probably on the booze actually. Um, Hobbit. Uh, I don't know. Do you want to put this up? Uh, this... I'll, put, I'll put it in. Do- I'll put it in doodling pad. It's up to you if you want to show him. Okay. Let's let's, let's have a look. At... That's not the picture of him now, by the way. <laughs> oh, that's just noddy. Um, let's go with the... low noddy. And wow. Okay, that he really has changed a lot since the OG van. So I'm going to show you, chat. Pete, Pete Doherty looks unrecognisable as star of Goebbels. Oh, Gobbles. Sorry, I thought it was like Joseph Goebbels. Gobbles cheese on dog walk in France. So here he is, and uh, there, there he was back then on on the smack. 
There he is. Yeah. I mean, his hair is all like grayed and stuff, but I suppose this that's... is this is your, this is your chin on smack, and here's your three chins on biscuits and cheese and yeah. Well, yeah. It... He's moved to France. He's but he's eating about ten meals a day, and if he's moved to France. And there's cheese in every meal. It's like the the Japanese don't consider it a meal unless you got rice. The, the French don't consider it a meal unless you got cheese. Um, yeah. Cheese on toast is his new guilty pleasure. Well, to be fair, there is queso morphine in cheese. He's been so, putting a few cheese on toasts away by the look of him, hasn't he? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking he gets through a lot of cheese on toast. And like I said, queso morphine, it's a opiate in cheese and things like that. And... Uh, BC, stop taking heroin and ketamine. Yeah. What's, what's Compte then? It's a type of cheese. It's a, Oh, it's a nice soft cheese, actually. It's really good. Hang on. Yeah. Um, I haven't got my cheese correspondent here, so I can't ask her um, because I, I could be confusing it with Preby. Um, Preby's the other one. I've got some nice. My boyfriend is with at the bottom there. I've got some nice blue cheese around. Yeah. Uh, the Libertines and Baby Charles Rock and munched on his favourite cheese whilst taking. Also, a... Pete had a close friendship with a late singer. Uh, late singer. Oh, what? Singer, Amy the late w- Amy Winehouse. Wait, Amy the Winehouse. late singer. Um, Before she died. Yes. Well, he weren't friends with her after she died, was he? Well, unless he was doing some seance. Yeah. Right, let's have a look Among at the. One of the seer comments when it said, Pete looks so healthy, I love it. <laughs> uh, yes, how healthy. That's the American euphemism for a fat bastard. Yeah, to be yeah. fair, he does look a lot healthier than he did. He looked like a fucking walking skeleton before, didn't he? Yeah, well, he's he's got he's gone from one one end to the other, has he? I, I don't think this is a guy that. So, I need to get Binman there, but in order to get Binman there, they need to. Binman. Oh, yeah. Um, anyway, the, let's. Let, I'll carry on plodding through these wines. So, Ian Botham. Ian Botham, seven ninety nine, which is a Chardonnay. So that is that going to be a white one, then, is it? Ch- Chardonnay. Chard- what is Chardonnay. Chardonnay is white, isn't it? Chardonnay. It just it, it's like that's the name like uh, a, a daughter gets called in Essex. Yeah. Chardonnay. 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 All right, Chardonnay. All right, Dad. Oh, you, anyway, back to the question: Is Chardonnay white or red? It's white. It, it's, isn't it? it's a white. It's a white wine. Yeah. So what? What? What the taster says: strong flavoured, slightly peachy and acidic. Not a big hitter. Rather a standard Chardonnay. Two out of five. Chardonnay. Uh, Graham Norton. Oh wow. Graham Norton. Pink by design. New Zealand rosé. Inoffensive. Quaffable with enough label. All light, fruity. Sunday sunny afternoon treat. In case you forget, his name's written on the bottle eight times. Perhaps a bit of a vanity project, two out of five. Sounds like it. Oh, Heston. Heston does it. Heston, Heston gin Blumenthal on... and a lazy espresso martini. Oh, okay, because I was going to say there's plenty, there's more than one Heston Blumenthal gin, and you can get them at yeah. Waitrose. I know that. Um... I see this is a pre mixed cocktail. Right. Ready mixing this particular cocktail is very hard to get it right. This one isn't a bad effort. But it's too sweet, a bit like Tia Maria needs a bit more of a caffeine punch, so he said it's three out of five. Okay. Ryan Reynolds has got a gin. So Ryan Reynolds gin is 30 quid a bottle. That's slightly expensive, but it's not that expensive for a gin, is it? Well a gin's between twenty two and twenty five a bottle, isn't it? Yeah. And why are these guys switching lanes? So they're switching lanes and then they're going there to switch lanes again. What what what's up with that? Why are you do don't do that sort of thing. That's that's not right. <laughs> I got off. the next one's funny. So anyway, um, so Ryan Reynolds gin. If you want to buy it, it's called Amer- Aviation American Gin. While we say this kind of strength gin, forty-two percent, but feels like fifty, is the kind you might need to suck on before taking on a hairy wartime bombing raid. Really makes your eyes water. Its botanicals are complex and hard to define. This is very popular, Jim. Perhaps more of a Christmas treat than a regular go-to. So four out of five, that gets. Mm. Uh, David Beckham. This is funny. So the David Beckham £25 uh, Scotch whiskey. Looks like a cheap bottle of aftershave. Not very sophisticated at all in flavour. Tastes like an ordinary mass-produced blended whiskey. Save you money. One out of five, that gets. Right, I'm going to put some time traffic oh, lights in here. Oh, P. Diddy's Chirac Snap Frost Vodka. 
I'm assuringly strong with a pure taste, citrus undertones. This one isn't a shooter. Perfect for a uh, long icy cooler style drink at the poolside this summer, four out of five. Anyone know who Spencer Matthews is? Um, no. Low alcohol drink. Jim will fuck that one off then. Oh, that's it, I think. Have you seen these non alcoholic gins? Is that just like tonic water with juniper flavouring? I should think so, yeah. It's the new thing, isn't it? It's all the rage now, isn't it? I don't see the point. I like this one. Oh, I can't find that one now. Sayera Carter said, um, said we should be giving cooking lessons to the can't cook, won't cook generation. Uh, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know. And claims he failed drug test for job after eating Tesco poppy seed bread. Is this possible, Robert? Yeah, uh, I've actually heard of people going through Dubai where they've had like poppy seed bagels and they test positive for opiates because poppy seeds do contain traces of opium. And in fact, the Papaveria sonifarium is, is the one where they get the, the uh, opium from. And that is the white poppy. McDonald's announced 7,000 incredible deals, including favourite menu items. Do you want to know about this one, Robert? Yeah, go on. Uh, from from today, June 9th. Okay, then. Forget it. <laughs> Forget it, of it. That's gone. That's long gone. Hmm. Uh, your favourite story from the other week? Dad needs therapy after 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 fish and chips. Yeah, we well, you know, that's this news from the past that one, isn't it? Yeah. Oh jeez, that tailback's huge. What the fuck? A family a family underst understood had to be thrown out of a club pub after becoming abusive towards staff at the car free counter. The rowdy relatives were banned from ever returning to the venue following an angry exchange over the various roasts on offer. The group had spent five and a half hours at the premises and were believed to be intoxicated, according to police. Some of the family members were elderly and left red face after being kicked out of the Cherry Tree Farm pub near Willington in Derbyshire. Mercia Police safe, Safer Neighbourhood team spokesman said to the intoxicated family who spent five and a half hours in a carvery restaurant near Willington before abusing staff members, what were you thinking? Just before the shift was due to end on Saturday, June 5th, an emergency call came in for a dispute disturbance at a local pub. Information received indicated an angry exchange near the four roasts on offer. The family objected from the... F They're not telling us why. Hmm. Please remember, many waiting staff working in the hospitality industry are naturally, naturally anxious about the spread of COVID-19. It is totally unacceptable to behave in a supercilious manner towards them. Uh, supercilious. That's a word which... I've, uh, yeah. Um... You know what? I'm gonna look it up right now. Supercilious. Uh, supercilious. Oh, it's not two words. Supercilious. Feeling or showing a haughty disdain is synonym yeah. synonymous with arrogant. Um, Obviously, these people probably had a case because they're not telling us what it is. Oh, uh, Alphabet Cat says the poppy seed bagel thing was even mentioned in an episode of Seinfeld. What's it? Oh, what? Never watched a single episode. Neither have I. Oh, no, I watched an episode of Seinfeld where they, like, took off the laugh track and you see how sinister it is. I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> there's no... Bearing in mind there's no, there's no punctuation in this. First picture of stalker suspected of killing tragic horse lover of Gracie Spinks in murder suicide. So is she? Is it? So are they trying to say that she fucks her horse? Ugh. Um. That's what it says. It says first picture of stalker suspected of killing tragic horse lover, Gracie Spinks. Horse lover Gracie Spinks in murder suicide. Ah. Um. Like. Uh, you, you, you know, sometimes. Um, just because they're saying it, that doesn't like mean physically love a horse. 
that, that could... no, it doesn't. But there's no punctuation in it, so it sounds like so it sounds like that was what it, it's, what to it's say. like that example of it where like commas are important. It's like I helped my uncle Jack off of a horse. Um, so you, you like your uncle's called Jack yeah. and you helped him off the horse, as opposed to no Corin. It's like I helped my uncle Jack off a horse. Yeah, uh, what, do you remember that other one? Was it you use punctuation, psychopath? Do you remember that one? Use that punctuation. I can't remember what the sentence is, isn't it? It's something about eating kids, isn't it, or something? Hey, there's there's two there's two cannibals and they're eating a clown. And cannibal one goes to cannibal two and says, "Does this taste funny to you?" Uh, basically, he, he he was he was he went he went he went full top cat on her and went and killed her. Oh, Flossie says she's seen the the Seinfeld without a laugh track and it's psychotic. Have you seen the one where the, there's like the Arab and he's making soup? Friends is the other one, isn't it? And, uh, oh yeah, that I hated Friends. I really did. Um, but Ricky's coming back to EastEnders. Oh, great. Oi, Ricky! EastEnders okay. legend Sid Owen's shock return to Albert Square, derailed by well, money why is, why is it a shock? Well, what's shocking about he's, this? He's an Acrotor. He's an Acrotor, apparently, Hobbit. Acrotor? Acrotor. A-C-R-T-O-R. ACR. That's what it says before you zoom into it. Fuck me. Um, yeah. It's just terrible, isn't it? The state of journalism, it, it's. It's spelled A C R T O R. It's an, he's an acrotor, apparently. I don't know what an acrotor is. The absolute fucking state of uh, journalists. Journalistisms. I'm looking for a free <laughs> state of panic. Locals scared to leave home after 1,500 travelers descend on showground. Oh, oh dear. That, oh, that's in that's in Oakham. Fuck. That's that's not good. That that's bad. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, Flossie, did you see the um, the soup episode where like there's an Arab and he makes soup and they all want the soup? Oh, I think I think. And then Barry Moore's got a new boyfriend. I don't know who that young man is he with. Oh no, I hate Barry Moore. Why? Why does? Barry... And he look and he actually looks like fucking Stuart Lubbock, Stuart Lubbock as well. Ugh. It's geezer he's with. That's one of the things. Like in June, they are saying it's really homophobic because the bad he's guy. In, well, he's in the news because Michael Barrymore smiles as he walks his dog after being quizzed over a two th two thousand and one pool death of Stuart Lubbock. Twenty years, fuck me. Well, he's, is it the smile of a man who knows he's got away with murder? Is that is that? I should what think so. Yeah. Yeah. If he is, if if he wasn't, you know, if that was anyone else, they'd be the one on trial because it was their house it happened in, wouldn't it? If it was anyone else, I, do you think he's like in the society of elaborate handshakes? Is that how he got away with it? In on the telly, I think. But I think that's enough. Well, I I thought like because he was in there in the nineties, he'd have got there through like a. Masonic. Quite uh, this one then. Extreme stress. Caroline Crouchy's smart wa smartwatch showed her heart rate surged as husband smothered her for five minutes after fight. Pillowed her. Hmm. Yeah, I suppose not being able to breathe could cause. Caroline Crouch was attacked by Babis Agnastopolopolopoulos. Uh, so there you go. Race mixing is fine. Always works out well, doesn't it? It'll be it'll be all right in the end, as Michael Barrymore said. It'll be all right. I hate Michael Barrymore. <laughs> Auto incorrect. Hairdresser's predictive text fail leads her dad to think she's a prostitute. A hairdresser got her French letters mixed up when she read, messaged her mum asking for conditioner for her clients, but predictive che text changed it to condoms. So it actually read, uh, Mum, can you bring some condoms in the morning? I've run out and I've got clients coming. <laughs> the, da -da -da -da. Oh. It's like, for example, autocorrect. Never, not once in the history of humanity has ever somebody wanted to use the word ducking in this sentence. You know yeah. what the word is. I know what the word is. Use the word. Uh, do you want to show the video of a gruesome moment crowing a huge rat of a fight in the worst streets of Derby? Um, why can't I upgrade that road is what I'm more interested in. 
six lane, a six lane road. Oh no, I can upgrade it. There we go. Yeah, all right. Um, I'm gonna have a dedicated turn off lane. Oh, it's already done it for me. Okay, that's good. Yeah, all right. Let's 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 have a look at this. Um, uh, the full street in. You're gonna. Uh, I think it doesn't. Derby have a bit of an bit of the other kind of rat problem. It's got a, um, a Thai lady boy competition problem or solution. Yeah, they they have like an annual thing about like uh, stuff like that. So let's have a look here. So here's the video, and um, so so the uh, so the. Um so, so the commentary in, in the thing in the clip the bird chases the rat as it hops across the road trying to peck at its tail oh it's got it its manages tail to grab hold of it and forcefully drags the road and road in behind a car park a parked car but the rat is having none of it and turns on the crow which flaps its wings in the air in defense the two then spar before the bird manages to nab the rat's tail again and yanks it across the pavement the video is taken by nasir Ter on Whiston street in normanton if, yeah. I, if only people knew why the streets of Normanton were a shitter with rats running everywhere. Yeah, well, why is there like crows and rats fighting in Nor Normanton? So, the, wait, wait a minute. Um, why, why would why would the area in which Nazir Ter lives in be like this? Right. So that, that's I'm going to copy that and I'm going to have a look at this Whiston Street in Derby. So let's have a look. Whiston Street, Derby. UK. The area sits in Rose Hill. Saw 301 crimes. You report. Reported during April 2021, and the I, most recent data available, with antisocial behaviour and violent and sexual offences amongst the most common. Ironically this enough, compares, uh, that yeah, there's uh, a Rose Hill in Oxford, and it's a notorious drug dealing area. Um, yeah. I don't know how I'd know such a thing, but let's have a look at this Whiston Street. So you've got terraced houses. I haven't got any mate. Oh, hang on, is that? No, that's that's not the place, is it? So let's see if I can find where this this fight took place. So there's Oak Street. So this is still. Is that is that it? Is that Whiston Street? So, um, hang on. Let's go back to the story. Yeah, I'm sure I want to go to this thing. So he says in Whiston Street in Normanton. So. Uh, oh, well, there's a Schwammer Express wrap, but that's... So, Whiston Street's quite small. And then you've got Pear Tree Road, mm. where you've got Schwammer wrap, Apra Curry, Roots Barbers, Shamashara. So, let's have a look at this instead. So, this is... You've got the meat market. So, top quality fresh meat. You've got sweet with Alam Jalalau written all over it. You got Mi yeah. Mipo Julia specialising in twenty four and twenty two character. Why, why would this area be such a shit hole with rats all over the place? Then Hobbit, it's, it's a puzzle, isn't it? Hot pizza and chicken. So th this this is the what's next to it. So we got pear tree kebabs, uh, apna curry and fast food. Apna curry and fast food. Donny kebab, curry, fish and chips. Uh, every every Sunday breakfast. Yeah. Okay. Shapir Tandoori. So let's just let's go around. So as you can see, somebody, I, I assume, uh, there is a lot of rubbish on this on this street. So let's just yeah. let's go for and have a bit, have a go. Uh, so we got what else have we got? The band there. Heidler's Flaming Joe, Zam Zam Supermarket. Fresh groceries and meat, fresh naan. That's, a nice, that's a nice typeface. Thing. What font are they using there? Zamzan Supermarket. Your your guess is as good as me. Imam, all your Islamic Imam. needs under one roof. Um, yeah. do, does the Islamic needs include like clean streets free of rats? I guess not. No, 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 no. That, that's haram. Um, Cleaning K up after yourself is haram. K and B first choice closing down sale. I guess they that Krishna. Uh, Libara Mobile Services. I believe they they would call this the Merchants Court. Cake box. I'm pretty sure cake box. Egg free. Hundred percent vegetarian cakes. There's one of those in Leicester. Eggless fresh cream cakes. Desi Sweet Center and vegetarian pizza. So yeah. hot autographic. Set. The Hota. Wait a minute. Hota photo. So why 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 could these streets be a shithole then, Hobbit? I, I, I'm just seeing no cues. 
yeah, I mean, there's there's not much to go on, is there? And the thing is, I'm not looking at no. Western Street itself. Normanton Community Learning Centre. So we're in the right area. We've got... Pear Which community? Pear Tree, yeah, well, that's a good question. Jazz Collection. Technologies. Yeah. We've got Hardy Barber. Bloody Stan Bakery. Sharif and Sons Halal Meat Market. So... I've got, not even, you know, I just... I just um, by rights, I mean, with all these hard-working um, people, I, I would have thought the streets would be spotless. So, not even a hundred yards away, there's a meat market, and then there's another yeah. meat market, and then we yeah. we got in here. What was this? Uh, Sharif and Sons Super Superstar. 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 Yeah. See a woman there wearing a, a face mask on the back of her head. Uh, yeah. So we're just going to take this this thing here and. Hang on, there was an ethnic there. Let's go back. Where's the ethnic's gone? There, there was an ethnic like here. I saw him too. He's in the Matrix, I bet. Do 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 do. There's the ethnic. You're gonna go back to there and then see. Oh, there he is. There's there's an ethnic and there's more ethnics. So, and then there's Abu Sharif School. So, oh, that's nice. You've got all these uh, and Abu Hams, I think. So there we got somebody who can't... Oh, two white kids. Three white kids. Yeah. Uh, incredible. Uh, we, we got, what we got... I still haven't found a... I've, I still haven't, still haven't found a reason. Maybe it's them three white kids that throw all the rubbish on the floor. Yeah, they're just throwing chicken bones out and stuff like that, and they... Uh, there's a nice ethnic family. And, yeah, they're uh, picking up litter as they go along. Yeah, they're, they're definitely... You know, looking after the community. So this is the back of like yeah. the thing. So we got flats and we got houses and stuff like that. Um, I wonder if I can find my mate's old student digs. I don't even remember what street it was on. Uh, ah, there we go. International halal premier halal meets HMC front side. Oh, you know, if you're going to buy halal from a place, I'd do it from a place with a roller shirt, wouldn't you? I, I, d- I definitely would get my meat from a, a garage. That that's yeah. yeah. And what what we got here? We got Hasib meat and poultry shop. Is there a is there a need in this like area to have like so many like butchers, but halal butchers? If oh I mean, dear, let me get through some meat. These people. I I, I mean I, I don't know about you, but I'm I'm beginning to think that maybe there's not enough business in this area to support all these things, and perhaps it's like a front friend. But this is Whiston Street, so this is. That's beautiful. That is. That's the. That's them white kids that left all that. So there, I think this is where they're having the fight. So uh, we can see yeah. here this area. Um, we've got a few cobbles that have been paved over tarmac, and uh, yeah. So this this is where the fight took place. So we have got some commercial bins there, and the. Oh yeah, it is there as well because I can see the fence. I've just. Uh, I've yeah. Just, uh... So there's there's our Western Street. So we got like a car park here, and uh, we got all the various sort of like meat places. It wouldn't be anything to do with Nafis Bakers, would it? Or and Sadler's Halal. I'm just looking. I can't imagine any of those. The Shabir area. Tandoori. I mean, this is that looks beautiful. That that car park Shwa- does at the back, doesn't it? I'm I'm looking at the aerial photogra- photography here, and it's just like that's rubbish, which is visible from space. Yeah. If you've got rubbish of, of visible from space, maybe, maybe you know, maybe you de- like, maybe you deserve to have like crows and stuff fighting one another. Um, yeah. But anyway, let's let's go back to uh, the, uh, let's go back to the game because that's what people people want to see the game and let's let's have a look at that train station, see if it's cleared itself up, and then I'll have a look you at. Want to finish comments. on some dear Deirdre Hobbit? Oh, yeah, let's do some Dear Deidre's, but I'm going to be reading any comments as well. So, uh, oh, they, they complain about lack of water. Yeah. Uh, Mum walks around the house we're naked now. She wants to earn money from posting nude. Dear Deidre, Mum has always been very comfortable with her body and happily walks around her home naked. Now she wants to pose nude for work. I'm horrified. Um, I'm 18. My mum's 43. Me and my younger sister are used to it. Is she a Although at the age of eight, I did ask her to cover up my mo- when my friends were around. She's decided she wants to work as a life model where she'd sit naked for artists to sketch. I'd be mortified if she works at my college where I'm studying videography. The art students always have a right laugh when they've been sketching a new model. The whole college knows when, when they're doing drawing life lessons. 
Uh, I'm worried some of my friends who do art may end up seeing mum completely naked. I'll never live it down. I feel bad because she thinks she's finally found the right job for her, but I really need to tell her she can't. I really need to tell her to stop being such a filthy fucking whore. Uh, How... Yeah. It's really po it's really positive that your mum is comfortable being naked. Her positive body image will have provided you both you and your sister with a good role model. Why not have a chat with your mum? I'm sure that she might be happy to avoid working at any venues where your friends might be. So, he just needs to stop being a fucking bigot, doesn't he? So in other words, Deirdre says it's your problem, not hers. And okay, my the trains have come to complete standstill, so we've got more trains coming in. We've got a whole pile of trains here. I don't think I think I'm gonna have to have dedicated lines. So, right, let's do this again. I oh, I DOA's do that. written in. Uh, uh, I can't. My boyfriend hasn't been able to get an erection with me for the past year. I've been with my boyfriend for three years, and for the past year and a half, he hasn't been able to get an erection with me. I'm one of 39. He's 43. She obviously changed some details, hasn't she? So we yeah. don't know it's her. Even since going to his GP who gave him Viagra, there's no change. He still can't perform. Uh, maybe boyfriend does far too much trembolone or... Uh, or, or yeah, maybe just cut, cut down the steroids, boyfriend, and, uh, yeah. you know, st stop telling Flossie that... Uh, just just actually just stop. Just stop, full stop. Oh, chat spoke, spoke something very interesting. He says... Bruce, he says, I don't believe any of the butchers are real. Supermarkets are full of halal anyway. Yeah, that's a good yeah. point. I mean, it's you can go in there, you can you can see meat in various stages of decay, um, too many squats, and uh, also no phone case shop. What sort of like you know, the, what sort of neighbourhood is this? Yeah, that was the technology one, wasn't it? Oh yeah, but there wasn't like a, a specifically a shop. There was Labara where you can get your you know your dodgy phone service. A Geralt's written in. He said, "My love for casual sex means I've got three girls pregnant." Wow, is he? Doing... I'm 26 and have one night stands with women I meet on de on dating apps like Bumble. Uh, within the space of a few weeks, three women have said they're pregnant with my baby. Do you know what's ironic about that? Geralt's actually extolled the virtues of Bumble to me. <laughs> has he got you on Bumble then? As he as he have it? Uh, no, no, I, I've I've declined uh, that offer. I um, you know the weird thing about I mean you know this is my anti-Semitism shining through here, but why are like all the dating apps run by Jews? Like even Christian singles, Jewish. Yeah. What, what's well, my mum said my two-year-old son had chubby cheeks just like her mum. My girlfriend was really offended. And ten months later, she still won't speak to her. My mum is 57 and my girlfriend is 28. My mum knows her comment was clumsy. Bitch. So she's always telling her out. Not the daughter or the bit, mum? Uh, the, the daughter. Yeah. The fucking swallows. Well, you know, well, what, what was that meme about? Uh, I'm an archaeologist because uh, I like digging through ancient history. I know women make uh, the best archaeologists because they're always digging up ancient history. Yeah. 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 Oh Jesus! My mother's wedding ring was stolen off her dead body. Uh, oh. Oh, gonna... based. This is the one. I slept with my neighbour's wife, and now he wants to fight me. <laughs> based. On, I'm proud it. I humiliated my neighbour by having sex with his wife, but now he wants to fight me. I'm a single guy, age 27. I've been in a few of my neighbours around 50 for seven months. Several months ever since I moved into the same apartment block. He bangs on my door, shouts and complains about me, saying I make a lot of noise and play my music too loud that he dislikes my friends. Uh, he threatens to get me evicted. If I bump into him in the hall, he glares and curses at me. His wife is sweet, though, and hot. Whenever I see her alone, she apologises for his behaviour. She's younger than him, about 37, I think he embarrasses her. It's like she knows she could do better. One day, a couple of weeks ago, she sent me a text message about a problem with her bins. We got into a text exchange, which got extreme, extreme, increasingly flirty. After multiple text messages, she agreed to come round to my flat while her husband was away for work. One thing led to another, we ended up having hard, passionate sex for three full days. Fucking hell, he's a goer, isn't he? Three full days of it. The most I've been done in one session was like uh, eight hours, yeah. and after then, I, 
Wow, my God. This, is, this was written by Top Cat. It was, it was incredible. The only thing more incredible was the knowledge that I'd officially cuckolded my nemesis. I'd proven to be the alpha male. Now she must have let slip what happened because she's steaming mad and said he wants to fight me. I'm younger, bigger, fitter, stronger, and I could easily beat him up. It's tempting, but I don't want to end up in prison. And let's face it, I've already destroyed him. What shall I do? Uh, you said they were made up. They are made up. They're made up by fucking Toppy. It, it's it's strange how like the 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 these sort of stories they, they we can find like real world applications of yeah th this is who it pertains to. <laughs> yep. Well, it's, it's strange but true. Do you actually use the words nemesis and alpha male? Oh, God. How Hemi. about this one? Hemi. 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 I still care about Hemi. my son, even Hemi. if he's a paedophile. Hemi. Hemi. Did he actually use the term alpha male and nemesis? Or is that... Yes, uh, that was that was verbatim I read, I read out there. That was all verbatim. Wow. That's that's incredible. What a guy. <laughs> what, what, what a guy. What a guy, Top Cat. Uh, my son is a convicted paedophile, but I can't stop loving him. Uh, okay. He's 38 and in prison for having sex with a 13-year-old girl. He even got her pregnant, so I'll have a, gan a grandchild I'll never be allowed to meet. I've also found out that he also abused his cousins when he was a teenager and they were young children. Fucking hell. So, by love, it's like, it's your own flesh and blood and he's fucked up so you condemn the crime, but it's like, it's still my son and I still love him, even though he's fucked yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's consistently fucked up. He fucked his cousins when he was a teenager. Yeah. Mm. Do you have my sympathy? <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, dear Deirdre, I sit at dinner with my boyfriend's parents and have to bite my tongue. They're racist, homophobic, and I'm not sure how much longer I can live under the same roof. Worse the than that, is... they're also sexist. His dad loves Trump and Brexit and everything I'm against. Uh, I bet you shut the fuck up then, because you're in someone's house. Yeah. His house, his rules. <laughs> she... this. He's made racist or homophobic slurs before, but when I've said you can't say that, he just says, I'm, I didn't say what I like, I'm old. <laughs> yeah, too. <laughs> Fucking dabbing on him. Yeah, it's, a, a, it's like, it's fuck you. Fuck you, it's my house. Itch. If you don't like it, you yeah. know where the bloody door is, you fucking foreign cunt. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, but I was actually born in Barnstaple. Yeah, that's foreign to me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, bitch. Fuck you. Don't like it. You know where the door is. Fuck right off. And speaking of fucking, exactly. fucking right off. Um, Fuck off, everybody. Pretty much. Yeah. Go away yeah. now. Go, go away now. Go away. Okay.